Chapter 21. The person who can cure a cultured youth is another cultured youth the poem was done reciting. After seeing that the female university student did not answer for a long while, he carried on, this poem is called, The Furthest Distance in the World, and is also called, The Flying Bird and Fish. Today I'm giving it you. Is Beijing and New York very far? I do not think so at all. You can still meet again, you can know each other again, you can fall in love again and can be together once again. Are you going to be defeated by this trivial geographical distance? Then your feelings isn't anything worth mentioning. Lady, don't use distance as an excuse. Do not use distance to avoid reality. In my opinion, the distance between you isn't far. Think of the flying bird and think of the small fish. If you are stubborn and insist on being self-righteous, then I will not say another word if you were to slash down with the blade. There was complete silence on the other side of the line. Following that, the sound of a girl sobbing could be heard, flying bird, and fish, asterisk sob asterisk, flying bird, and fish. Upon hearing the sobbing, everyone in the broadcasting room were excited. Previously, she had appeared too calm, but now she had cried? This meant she was moved. The female university student said while sobbing, teacher, then, what, should I do? Zhang Yi gave a thought, I do not know what you should do either. This is your path, so you will need to find your own path. But, asterisk sob asterisk, I don't know how to walk down the path. The female university student pleaded for help. Zhao Guoju, who was behind the glass, gave Zhang Yi an exaggerated gesture. The other literature channel staff were also secretly worried. Why can't you tell her what to do and save her? What do you mean, you should find your own path? What if she wanted to end her path there and then? Wang Xiaomai kicked Zhong Yi in the shin. However, it was as if Zhong Yi did not feel it. The female university student cried, Teacher, you tell me, what I should do, I trust you, asterisk sob asterisk. I can't sleep every day, what should I do, every day, I'm groggy, at night, I can't see any future. With her crying, Zhong Yi became calm, Lady, I do not have the right or the way to help you decide your own path. Even if we tell you, you might not listen to it. You need to think it through carefully. Let me give you another poem. I hope it can enlighten you somewhat. Another poem? The people outside held their breaths again. Zhong Yi said deeply, the dark night gave me black eyes, but I use them to seek the light. Again, this poem did not exist in this world, but it was famous in Zhong Yi's world. It was Ji Yu Cheng's A Generation. The entire poem only had those two verses. It was very short, but it contained within it a lot of energy. It was difficult to dissect and analyze the meanings within the poem. It could only be said that different people would have different insights. Zhong Yi gave her this poem, hoping she would be enlightened. At least, when Zhong Yi was previously lost, this poem had accompanied him for a long period of time. The dark night gave me black eyes, but I use them to seek the light. The female university student repeated it again and slowly stopped crying. Five minutes. Ten minutes. The female university student suddenly spoke, Teacher Zhong Yi, thank you. I think I know what I should do. I will wait for him. I also want to wait for him. Regardless of the final outcome, I will not try to commit suicide again. Thank you. Your two poems. I will remember them for life. Zhong Yi said, I wish you happiness. I also believe a good lady like you will be happy. The netizen listeners in front of their computer screens started sending in messages in an explosive manner, breaking all historical records. No number of refreshes were enough to show all of them. Heavens! Teacher Zhong is too good. Right, this is the first time I'm seeing a broadcast host who can speak so well. The furthest distance in the world? This poem has too much feeling. I think the later poem was the best. The dark night gave me black eyes, but I use them to seek the light. It's a superb poem, a superb poem for the ages. No wonder he is able to write a divine work like, Ghost Blows Out the Light. I finally understand teacher Zhong Yi's artistic standards. It is evidenced by these two poems. Saving a life is better than building a seven-story pagoda. I've decided to support and listen to late-night ghost stories every day. With the situation assuaged, Wang Xiaomai let out a long sigh of relief and quickly said to the listeners, 
Thank you to everyone listening in to Talk About the World. We will meet you again tomorrow at the same time. With the transmission cut, the live broadcast ended. Wang Xiaomai slumped into her chair as if she had lost all strength. Zhong Yi gave a wry smile as he touched his neck. He was also covered in sweat. D asterisk M in it, to think I met a suicide situation on my first time being a guest. Can it even get any better? Thankfully, he had the wisdom of the ancients and managed to somehow convince the lady. The outer door opened as people rushed in. Deputy station head Jiao was no longer around. Zhao Guoju was the first to enter and he said loudly, well done, little Zhong. You did beautifully. It was really thrilling. Indeed, our teacher Zhong is talented. People began to admire and praise him. Zhong Yi's telephone editor, Xiao Fang, also gave him a thumbs up from behind the crowd, teacher Zhong, those two poems were too great. Words could kill, but words could equally save. Today, everyone who listened into the live broadcast learned this. By seeing this all at once, there were a lot of mixed emotions. Wang Xiaomai stood up and daringly said, Leader, today it was my responsibility. I will accept any punishments the station will meet. I was too provocative in my words. Zhao Guoju looked at her and did not criticize her, write a self-reflective piece and hand it to me tomorrow. Actually, it is not all your fault. That female university student had already prepared to commit suicide. Even if she did not make the phone call, she would definitely have committed suicide. From another perspective, by us counseling her, it's also a saving a life. Right, but make sure to be careful in the future. We need to greatly consider the listener's emotions and capacity to accept. This live broadcast can be said to be a lesson for all of us. It is also a form of experience. The matter was done. Everyone let out a sigh of relief. Wang Xiaomai looked towards Zhong Yi, those two poems were composed by you? Zhong Yi could not say no. After all, these poems did not exist in this world, yes. You can even compose poems? Wang Xiaomai found it unbelievable. Zhao Guoju, who was about to leave, heard this and turned around and laughed. All of you might not know how little Zhong was accepted during the interview, right? It was because of a prose, the song of the stormy petrel. Our entire literature channel's combined efforts probably cannot even match little Zhong's artistic talent in poems. Saying that, he reminiscenced and recited from the beginning. Zhong Yi never expected that Zhao Guoju would actually be able to recite his poem verbatim. Clearly, he loved the prose so much. That is the courageous petrel proudly soaring in the lightning over the sea's roar of fury, cries of victory the prophet. Let the tempest come strike harder. When everyone heard this, they were stunned. Good poem. It's written so well. This poem was also composed on the spot. Each of these poems was more stunning than the last. Only then did everyone recall what had just happened and an interesting thought arose in their minds. Hipsters were a kind of disease and so were cultured female youths. How could one cure this disease? The answer was simple, use a cultured male youth that was more artistic than the cultured female youth. Chapter 22, Appearing on the Newspapers Nighttime Past 10 in the evening Many people had gotten off of work. John Yi went to the recording studio alone to work overtime. As he did not manage to get a slot to record in the day and the broadcast was delayed by talk about the world at night, he could only record if it was this late. The first few episodes that he had recorded had been depleted over the weekend. So he needed to record Ghost Blows Out the Light episode for tonight in one and a half hours. Time was tight. The grave robbing military officers were working hard. Every corner in any tomb that was dug up had to, ah, it's not right. A candle was lit up inside any tomb that was dug up and placed on the southeastern corner. If the southeastern candle goes out, then one had to put back the treasures they had gotten, kowtow three times respectfully and return by the original route. This recording session was different from the past. There were stumbles along the way. Zhong Yi was also finding it tough. He never expected that this day would come so soon. Actually, he had previously memorized this book during in his school days to train his off-script skills, but he had only done so for the beginning. No matter how good his memory was, he was unable to recite the hundred thousand characters of Ghost Blows Out the Light. 
he had only memorized the early portions, so now was the problem. With the material he had memorized back then depleted, he quickly reached spots where he did not remember very well. Although Zhong Yi knew the direction of the plot and knew the details clearly, it was, after all, not the original version. A lot of the time, he had to create his original material. The literature and textual aspects of it were greatly weakened. He still knew where he stood. Clearly, this would definitely seriously affect the listenership rates. Pause. Deleting the paragraph. Re-recording. Only after a long while did he manage to finish it before midnight. He had managed to bamboozle past this for this episode, but he did not know what to do for the next episode. Sigh. If there were problems with quality and the listenership rates dropped, then what would happen? After finishing his work, Zhong Yi leaned on a window and smoked. The station prohibited smoking, but since there was no one late at night, it did not matter. Ring, ring, ring. Suddenly, his cell phone rang. Zhong Yi was wondering who had called late in the middle of the night. He picked it up, hello? The other party was male, hello, is this Mr. Zhong? I'm Beijing's rapper. Before he finished speaking, Zhong Yi thought it was a fraud and said, I don't care if you are Beijing or double. Don't you dare tell me I hit the lottery. I have already hit the lottery 47 times this year. Including the three BMWs and two Mercedes cars, the total prize money is 12,213,000. Don't you dare tell me my daughter has been kidnapped. Then you need to help me first find a wife. And don't you dare tell me you are promoting a ham. Sausage. Truthfully, I only have 1.50 in my pocket. If I were you, I would hang up immediately and not spend 5 minutes and manage to take the 1.50 in my pocket to buy your ham sausage, after using all your effort. That tiny bit of commission isn't even enough to pay the telephone bill. Against frauds and promoters, Zhong Yi was very experienced. All right, time for you to speak. If it was anyone else who had encountered a hooligan like Zhong Yi, they would have hung up. However, the man on the other side did not. He said in a speechless manner, I'm not selling Beijing ham. Man, I'm Beijing Times reporter. Is this Mr. Zhong Yi? Zhong Yi exclaimed, reporter? Hi, it was a mistake, it was a mistake. I thought it was a scam. The man said, it's all right. I got your number through a friend, who works at the radio station. The main reason is because of today's, talk about the world, which I listened in on. Our editing team is very interested about your two poems. We might publish this matter in the papers tomorrow, so we are informing you first. Also, I want to ask about the name of the second poem, as you did not mention it during the broadcast. Zhong Yi was enlightened and, after thinking, said, the second poem is called A Generation. The reporter was amazed, A Generation? This title doesn't seem to fit. The title, A Generation, was actually more fitting for another topic. The original author, Ji Yu Cheng, had intended it for the thoughts and determination of an era and society. When Zhong Yi read it to the female university student, had not adhered to the title's meaning. It had lacked the great meaning that was so significant. But as Zhong Yi respected the original author and had used the wisdom of the forefathers, how could he then change the poem's title, too? Cultured youths, oh, cultured youths, when you break down such kind of a person, what is left over would be stubbornness. Zhong Yi was not an exception, he abided by his principles. So what if it did not fit? He knew the title was different from how he had expressed it tonight, but this was a work by a great poet from his world. A classic ought to be respected, Zhong Yi thought to himself. Even if the author cannot see it, regardless of any reasons, can going against this principle be excused? Going against morality can be excused. The answer was obvious, he he, of course, it's excusable. Zhong Yi answered, publish what you feel is suitable. As long as it can be published, you can do whatever you want. I'm fine with it even if you had to give it a dreamy title to increase the sales. He was a man of principles, but sometimes he was also a man of no principles. This was Beijing Times. It was not the same as the small publication that published reports of, Ghost Blows Out the Light. The reporter nearly vomited blood upon hearing that. He was just freely expressing his thoughts, who would have thought that Zhong Yi had no lower limits? 
He was a modern poet, an artist who could compose such a classic poem. Yet he would allow his poem's title be changed so easily? Damn, do you even have the conduct of a scholar? How could there a scholar like you? The reporter who was astounded, replied with a cough, I didn't mean that, I was not implying that you should change the title. It's better we keep it as, a generation, it's your work, so I can't be deciding on it. All right, then. Zhong Yi replied uncaringly. After speaking for a brief while, they hung up. Zhong Yi's strong point is that he did not have any fear. After the line was cut off, he could no longer suppress his excitement. He was going to be in the Beijing Times? A little more fame had come again. It was another step towards his goal. Oh, right. I should take a look at my reputation. He opened up the virtual game screen. Reputation points, 95,344. What? Why are there so many points? Zhong Yi was startled. He had just used up all his reputation points on Saturday morning. According to the reputation gained from Ghost Blows Out the Light, there should be around 20,000 gained reputation points daily. Over the weekend, he had about 40,000 reputation points. Including the holiday, which might have given him a little more, he should have slightly below 50,000 reputation points. In short, today's Talk About the World S Live broadcast had brought him over 50,000 reputation points. This was really worthy of the Literature Channel's top program. Just the number of listeners were a big difference. Of course, Zhong Yi's outstanding performance could have helped contribute, the two poems were just right for the circumstances. It must have conquered a lot of listeners. Chapter 23, Becoming Slightly Famous The next day on the way to work, while walking past the subway's west newsstand, Zhong Yi asked, has the Beijing Times newspaper arrived? How much? A dollar, the owner replied mechanically. Zhong Yi took out some money, give me a copy. The owner took the money and handed a copy over, okay, take it. Zhong Yi, broke as hell, felt bad giving the dollar. But it was unavoidable, money ought to be spent that had to be spent. He held up the paper and flipped through it page by page. When he arrived at the subway and pushed through the crowd at line 10, a sparkle appeared in his eyes. He flipped to the center page, saw his name printed across the page with the headlines especially attention capturing. Two poems saved a life. Yesterday night, on Beijing radio station's literature channel program, Talk About the World, special, during the call-in session for the Matters of the Heart topic, a female university student attempted suicide on the air over her boyfriend's plans to further his studies in New York. The program host, Wang Xiaomai, attempted to talk her out of it, but failed. In the end, the guest of the show, the Literature Channel's Late Night Ghost Stories host, teacher Zhong Yi, saved her life with two poems. The Dark Knight gave me black eyes, but I use them to seek the light, yay generation. The furthest distance in the world is not the distance between opposite sides of the world. It is that you don't know that I love you, when I stand in front of you. The furthest distance in the world is the love between the bird and fish. One is flying in the sky, the other is looking upon the sea. The furthest distance in the world, also named, Flying Bird and Fish. The above other poems in their original form. According to sources, the two poems were composed on the spot by teacher Zhong Yi. Our reporter also contacted teacher Zhong for an interview late last night. Although it was just a phone call, he was awed by teacher Zhong Yi's literary talent. Ah? Awed by my literary talent? Zhong Yi blushed a little. He had taken the reporter to be a ham salesman. Literary talent, my ass. The report continued, we have to mention here a side story. At midnight, the editorial department was rushing the report. After seeing the two works, they were moved. An explanation and review of the two poems were done, but when handed over to the head editor for checks, we were held back from publishing it. After reading the poems, his own words were, delete all the reviews and analysis. Do not use the old way of writing the report. Flying Bird and Fish, a modern poem like this would immediately hit it off with the reader. And the other, a generation, the strength in this cannot be explained by words. This is a great modern poem. Whether or not the author is a rookie, the only word to describe this poem is, great. Maybe the author's fame and current era's background are not enough to make this poem well-known throughout the world, 
but I believe time will prove much. A few years or maybe a few decades, or even a few hundreds years down the road, the future generations will remember this poem and remember a person, E Jong Yi and his A Generation. Our generation, their next generation and the future generation of the next generation. The review was highly positive. Zhong Yi's heart fluttered. Department. Morning. Zhong Yi walked into the office. Assistant Xiaofang was the first to welcome him, smiling and revealing her small canine teeth, Teacher Zhong, you came at the right time. We were just talking about the report in the Beijing Times. Have you seen it? Zhong Yi smiled. I've also seen it. Xiaofang giggled, people were chatting before about it. You are the first person in our literature channel to go in the Beijing Times in the recent years. She was happy for Zhong Yi. This is, after all, the Beijing Times. Even though it's limited to the capital area, the circulation numbers are in the hundreds of thousands. Most people don't have such a treatment. The old host, Teacher Fong, of Old and Young Story Club, looked over and gave high praises, Teacher Little Zhong, I heard the rebroadcast last night. I listened to the two poems again and again. Hi, indeed the younger generations will surpass us in time. I'm about to retire soon, so this station will be in the hands of you young people. Zhong Yi quickly said, it's not as serious as you make it out to be. My literary standard is still far from accomplished. I came to the station with a learning attitude. Today, it will still be the same. I'm hoping to receive lots of advice from every teacher. Tian Bin and Li Sai had already came to work. Zhong Yi also noticed him and saw the rage in Tian Bin's eyes. He was jealous and ignored Zhong Yi, before sitting at his desk. After having Zhong Yi rob the position of main host of Late Night Ghost Stories from him, Tian Bin was now a stand in DJ. He usually did not have any work to do and only stood in when there was a shortage. He had not gone on a program for days, so it wasn't strange that he was mad. However, Li Sai's attitude today was completely different. It was clear he did not want to speak, but for some unknown reason, he suddenly stopped just as he was about to turn around. Teacher Zhong, morning. Zhong Yi looked at him, oh, morning. Li Sai nodded with his head and then returned to his seat. It seemed like he had given in and had sized up the situation. Seeing this, Tian Bin's expression turned worse. His popularity was always average amongst his colleagues. Previously, he would often speak about people behind their backs, so it was not strange that he was abandoned by the masses today. Later on, the top celebrity of the station, Wang Xiaomai, came in. She did not look towards Zhong Yi and greeted a few old comrades and friends she had good relations with, before surprisingly saying to Zhong Yi, Teacher Zhong, quite a number of letters from my program's listeners were written to you. I will get an assistant to give it to you in a while. Although her attitude did not seem to change, one had to know that Wang Xiaomai had never privately addressed Zhong Yi as Teacher Zhong. A change in salutation clearly showed a subtle form of recognition. Twenty minutes later, Zhong Yi received the letters from the listeners of Talk About the World. In the generation where the internet was pervasive, this world was similar to Zhong Yi's world. Few people wrote letters, but Zhong Yi remained serious about it. Words written on a piece of paper felt more real and sincere. Hello, Teacher John Yi. I heard the program yesterday. I'm also a parent, so I won't say much. I'll just thank you for that child's parents. There was a total of 37 letters and all the feedback from the listeners was very positive. John Yi then went through the official email inbox of Late Night Ghost Stories. He read every mail sent by the listeners and then read the comments left on Beijing radio station's website. Suddenly, he saw a link and upon clicking it, he realized his, the furthest distance in the world, had been posted on a large discussion forum. There had been 750,000 views. There were more than 3,000 replies. This poem is too touching. Why are there so many views? Isn't this the early stages of going viral? It has gone viral online, too. When I saw this poem in the Beijing Times in the morning, I was impressed. However, I prefer a generation more. I'm a moderator for the literature section on a website and an outright literature lover. I have always liked modern poems and I especially like writing them. I have always thought that I write very well and have left many modern poems in the literature section. 
However, after seeing teacher Zhong Yi's two poems, I now know what it means to be the frog in the well. This is a real modern poem and what I wrote wasn't. There were praises and there were, of course, doubts. What rotten poem is this? It's just SOSO. Right, it's too lame. One moment the furthest distance is this, then the next moment the furthest distance is that. There is no precision. No matter how well anything was done, it could not satisfy everyone. John Yi knew this, so when he logged on, he wore an anti-troll fire vest before leaving a message. He did not have any strengths, only his attitude was good and tended to be more peaceful and calm. Seeing all the cursing, he only smiled and had the bearing of a literature writer and great poet. He answered in style, if asterisk asterisk k your second granny's lungs. Just soso? Do you even f asterisk asterisk king no literature? A. Eh? You dare think lightly of this divine work that can last the ages. You all are a piece of s asterisk asterisk t. A stinking piece of asterisk 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 asterisk. People immediately felt the rush, a, eh, why are you cursing? Another netizen chimed in, number 3256 is right. All of you don't understand art. Another netizen said, how can there be criticisms for a poem this classic? I really don't understand the aesthetic values of others. Right, this is a poem that has saved a life. Still SOSO? Then write a poem to save a life for me to see. Under John Yee's lead, those people who had left their negative opinions were drowned by their spit and no longer posted. Seeing the warm enthusiasm, John Yee logged off without his face red or heart throbbing excitedly. He did not feel that he was wretched. This was the attitude a literature writer had. Lao Tzu said this before, take actions when the right time comes. Chapter 24, Giving You Another Poem Zhong Yi sat in front of the computer, watching the praises given to him online. Past 10 a.m., a commotion sounded out outside the literature channel's office area. It was quite loud. Let us in. I want to find teacher Zhong Yi. This is an office. This place is restricted for non-staff. We just want to say a few words and leave. We definitely won't give you trouble. That still will not work. Go to the registration desk and wait for a while. Make an appointment first. After some pushing and shoving, a man and woman squeezed their way in. A security guard was half-heartedly blocking them, which many people could tell. Maybe it was due to a small meeting having just ended, but there were several music and traffic channel staff who were walking past. They were curious over what was happening. Finally, even Zhao Guoju was startled by this commotion as he came out of his office to probe the issue. What's going on? Zhao Guoju frowned. They are adamant about coming in. They refuse to listen to what I have to say, the security guard explained. We want to find teacher John Yi. Just letting us meet with him once would do. Just once, the male-female duo shouted. Upon seeing the situation, Zhong Yi had no choice but to stop the work on his hands and squeeze through the crowd, I'm Zhong Yi. Who are you? They rushed up and tightly held Zhong Yi's hands, teacher Zhong. Thank you. Thank you. You are Xiaoli's benefactor. You are also my benefactor. I want to thank you. Thank you. As he said this, tears welled up in his eyes. It was not easy for men to cry, so this scene looked odd. Zhong Yi was flabbergasted, what benefactor? The quiet girl beside also started crying after seeing her boyfriend cry, Teacher Zhong, I'm Xiaoli. If it weren't for the two poems of yours yesterday, I might have. Everyone immediately had a moment of realization. Zhong Yi also understood, it's you. Is this the boyfriend you mentioned? Don't cry. All of you, don't cry. The man had tears of remorse, I only knew about it yesterday night. If you have not persuaded Xiaoli, we would have been separated, forever in different worlds. You are our family's benefactor. Xiaoli suddenly opened her bag and took out a long red banner, this was rushed by my parents to be made overnight. Her boyfriend stepped forward quickly and pulled it open. Shua! The banner spread out in front of everyone. Gratitude of one speech, in mind for life. With that, the two of them stood properly and bowed deeply to Zhong Yi. Such a situation moved Zhong Yi greatly as he helped them up, to think you went through the trouble. 
There is really no need to. There is really no need. I didn't do much. All that matters is if you healthily and safely live on. He he, you are not fighting anymore? Have you discussed it well? The man bit his lip, I've thought it through, I'm not going overseas. Xiaoli exclaimed, no way. Your parents have already arranged it for you. Who says one can only be successful in one's career by studying abroad? I can develop myself domestically, too. I will explain it to my parents. It's all right, even if they do not agree. I will convince them. I will stay behind and accompany you. Once I graduate, we will get married, the man said with determination. However, Xiaoli remained resolute, definitely not. You have to go. Even if you don't want to. I have already thought it through, I will wait for you. I'll wait for you, no matter how long it takes. Xiaoli. The man's eyes turned red again. Xiaoli gently hugged him, as long as you are well, I'll be fine with anything. Upon seeing this scene, many people in the office clapped in their hearts. The power of love was always infectious. Isn't this good? Zhang Yi laughed. Zhao Guoju also said, next time, be well. Don't do something stupid. Xiaoli said embarrassingly, I won't. I'm fine as long as he lives well. I will not make him worried ever again. Suddenly, someone made a suggestion, teacher little Zhong, give them another poem. Right, right. Assistant Xiaofang said, let teacher Zhong give you another poem. Zhao Guoju also found it interesting, this suggestion is good. When you get married, remember to invite teacher little Zhong as your marriage witness. Xiaoli was flattered, how can I accept it? Teacher Zhong's words are like gold. I don't dare to ask for one after he gave me two poems. Zhong Yi touched his nose. With the leader saying that, he had to give a poem, so he said, all right. Let me think. The Beijing Times had highly appraised and published Zhong Yi's modern poem, which was proof of his literary prowess. Now that Zhong Yi was about to compose another poem, many people perked up their ears. The staff from other departments who were outside also tried to get in on the action. Don't block. Move to the side, I can't see. Sister Chen, come quickly. There's another poem. What poem? Whose poem? It's the one from the literature channel that went on Beijing Times. That poem is very popular online now. The author of Flying Bird and Fish? Wow, then I must listen to it. Wait for me to go in. Many people squeezed into the large office as nearly a hundred pair of eyes stared at Zhong Yi. Xiaoli and her boyfriend was looking forward to it the most. They did not even bat an eyelid. Zhong Yi never expected the situation to be so grand with so many audience gazing at him. He turned more cautious for he could not embarrass himself with a lousy poem. Well, what poem should I use? Which poem was most appropriate? Zhong Yi recalled a moment, as long as you are well, I'll be fine with anything. Got it. He slowly spat out his words, Xiaoli, the words you said previously are quite nice. I will use your words as the foundation for the poem I'm giving you. The room turned silent. Zhong Yi slowed his breath and recited. The passage of time is like water, ever so silent. If you are living well, then the skies are clear, Zhao Guoju immediately applauded, good poem. When her boyfriend heard it, he immediately took it down on paper, afraid he would forget it. Xiaoli did not move and closed her eyes, as if reveling in the poem. After a while, she bowed at Zhong Yi once again, thank you. You are forever my teacher. If you are living well, then the skies are clear? A female staff member seemed to feel her eyes fog up upon hearing this. It was unknown if she had recalled something or was moved. Wang Xiaomai and Xiaofang also mumbled to themselves and the way they gazed at Zhong Yi was no longer the same. Such a poem affected the feelings of women more. The poem was light and the words were simple, but the overflow of feelings it gave surpassed a thousand words. It was difficult to believe that this poem was the same male composer of Flying Bird and Fish. Furthermore, it was composed on the spot. What sort of literary talent was this? Zhong Yi's single poem completely astonished everyone. Even Tian Bin who was not far away did not say anything. 
Some people felt that the two poems given to Xiaoli during the broadcast were not composed on the spot by Zhong Yi, and were actually written prior, as they did not believe he was so talented. But now, this poem composed at this moment in time shattered the doubts of many. Actually, this poem was very famous in Zhong Yi's previous world. It was spread on the internet, especially the last line. There were all sorts of claims about who the original author was. Some said it was Lin Huayin. Some said it was Lin Huayin's dad. Some said it first appeared on the internet and another line was added in the show, Empresses in the Palace. It was not much different from, Flying Bird and Fish. Zhong Yi treated it as a collective work of predecessors. Anyway, no one in this world had heard of these people. There was no dispute to those poems being his alone. He said it was his? She said it was her dad's? Then he said it was her third aunt's. Hi, isn't that so troublesome and tiring? Putting the controversy to an end, Zhong Yi decided to unify it, this poem is mine. There's no need to thank me, just call me Lei Fong asterisk. Chapter 25, There Are Advertising Sponsors Lunch time. The poem that Zhong Yi gave to the young couple was once again relished by the radio station's colleagues. One could easily hear people discussing about it at any time of the day. Little Zhong, you are eating instant noodles again? The director came in. Zhong Yi hurriedly swallowed the last mouthful and smiled. Yeah, I just need to fill my stomach. Zhao Guizhu asked with concern, eating like this isn't healthy. Is it because you are tight on your living expenses, as you haven't been paid? He he, if that is the case, don't worry about it. I have something to announce in while. Looking at the office, he said, is everyone back from lunch? Then put down what you are working on for a while. As the scene in the morning had wasted some time, well, I'll be announcing the listenership rates for yesterday. Everyone looked over. Zhao Guizhu found a seat to sit down, first place, talk about the world. The listenership is. He purposely dragged out his tone, 4.09%. Ah? Is that true? Above 4%? Our rating broke 4%? It was clear that Wang Xiaomai was surprised by this. Zhao Guizhu said in a satisfactory manner, all these years, Xiaomei's segment has been our channel's number one in ratings, but it always averaged around 3%. Everyone, you didn't hear wrongly. We have really broken for this time. And I can happily tell you that the broadcast, Talk About the World, yesterday was fourth in the entire station, on average. We are only just behind the news channels 2 news segment and the traffic channels safe all the way. This is an unprecedented result for our channel. Everyone, please congratulate Xiaomai. There was applause and cheers. The colleagues were also beaming. If the performance was good, the year-end bonuses would also be multiplied, so it was a joyous occasion for everyone in the literature channel. Wang Xiaomai explained, thank you everyone. However, yesterday was a special case. There is no way that we can maintain it. She knew why they had jumped from the entire Beijing radio station's 8-9th place to 4th place. After a brief feeling of excitement, she did not say anything else. She wasn't alone. Zhao Guizhu and the rest were the same. Zhao Guizhu carried on, I recommend everyone to give teacher Little Zhong a round of applause. He he. Yesterday's program was all thanks to teacher Little Zhong, not only did he save us during a crisis, he had also pulled up the rating for Talk About the World. Let me announce the rating for Late Night Ghost Stories. Last night's Little Zhong segment had an average rating of 1.57%. It ranked third place in our channel and is higher compared to its weekend's 1.4%. Clearly, last night's event had led to this. I believe, and I have reason to believe, that under teacher Little Jong's hard work, late-night ghost stories will make a new high again. Hence, I have already spoken to the deputy directors and heads and plan to give the 5,000 yuan bonus award to teacher Little Jong. Does anyone have any objections about this? No objections. It is necessary. Teacher Little Jong, congratulations. Jong Yi pretended to be polite, leader, how can I? I'm just a newcomer. And really. Zhao Guizhu beamed with a smile, in a while, I'll let finance enter it into your wages. Do not be like that. It's what you deserve. 
Besides, this bonus is also because of another reason. From today onwards, Late Night Ghost Stories will have advertising sponsors. As your ghost blows out the light, has information regarding antiques and its listenership rates have been always high, a large pawn shop business's public relations staff have contacted the station. The sponsoring negotiations have basically been done. As for the exact numbers, it is still kept under wraps and I cannot divulge it. However, I can roughly tell you that, he he, about this late night ghost stories sponsorship. It is about the same as our channel's primetime programs and is extremely high. What? Almost the same as primetime programs? When this was revealed, many were dumbfounded. After all, Late Night Ghost Stories was a late night segment. It was worse than late night programs in the 11 pm to 12 am slot. However, the sponsorship it had obtained was nearly the at the level of fees commanded by primetime segments. Was the advertiser mad? However, it was reasonable once one thought about it. Late Night Ghost Stories was no longer a late night program hosted by Tian Bin. After Zhong Yi took it over, its ratings had an explosive increase. Also, the cohesion rate of the listeners was high. It could be seen from the figures of the listenership breakdown. The pawn shop business was using this relatively specialized and relevant program, which had greatly attracted its listeners, to gain recognition. Hence, this high advertising fee was not unreasonable. Teacher Little Jong, you will need to give a treat. Right, you must treat. It's so enviable. My afternoon segment sponsorship isn't even as high as yours. This is such a blow to me. Ha ha, when our salary is paid, don't be stingy and treat us all. The more advertising sponsorship there was, the greater the cut they would get for their salary. Zhong Yi may be still a rookie whose base salary was inferior to others, but with the addition of the cut of a sponsorship that was nearing the amount for primetime segments, Zhong Yi's monthly income would be higher than the older comrades who had had worked in the station for decades. Zhong Yi was also delighted, sure, sure. Seeing Zhong Yi's delighted mood, Tian Bin was so envious that his intestines turned green. He had ran late night ghost stories for years and, on average, it had 300 days a year without sponsorships. Occasionally, there would be a short term sponsorship, but the fees received were negligible. It was extremely low. This Zhong had only started work for a few days, how was he so lucky? Tian Bin still refused to acknowledge Zhong Yi's abilities. He was adamant that it was due to luck. After announcing all the program's ratings, Zhao Guoju called Zhong Yi over. He reminded him, the advertisers are coming soon. Today is the day we are signing the contract. They, too, want to see your recording situation in person. I have already gotten someone to reserve the recording studio for you. Once they arrive, you can begin. As for the advertisement lines, I haven't received them. They might bring it and I'll get someone to pass it to you. Zhong Yi responded, recording in the afternoon? Yes. Anyway, you do not need a script. Why? Is there a problem? Zhao Guoju asked. Zhong Yi bit his tongue, there's no problem, leader. I'll begin preparing. Zhao Guoju nodded, do well later. Don't let the advertisers pick fault with it, or there will be questions for the nearly settled contract. I understand. Don't worry about it. Zhong Yi guaranteed. When the leader left, Zhong Yi's face turned bitter. No problem, your sister. He had no way of reciting the remaining text of, Ghost Blows Out the Light. He only knew the rough direction to the plot. As he was excited about being in the papers, he had not worked out a draft. He had been planning to work out the draft in the morning, but who could have known that something would happen in the morning? Now, with the advertisers coming in the afternoon, there was definitely no time left. Even if he wanted to go off script, he couldn't. Ah, uh, was he going to destroy all the accumulated reputation in one go? Ghost blows out the light, was difficult to carry on. Was he going to mess up his own program? Bad things were about to happen. The end is near. Thankfully, he had still gotten 5,000 yuan in rewards. With money, even if he messed up the program, Zhong Yi would be fine. In this world, money is, no, that's not right. I think I previously said that I treated money like dirt. Let me think for a while, did I say that? Forget it, I don't think I said that. 
Chapter 26, Encountering a Tough Problem. 1 o'clock, afternoon. Zhong Yi hurriedly rushed his draft. Behind him, his assistant, Xiao Fang, called out to him. Teacher Little Zhong. What's the matter, Xiao Fang? Leader said to tell you that the sponsor for your program is here. Eh? So early? Didn't they say noon? Uh, it's noon now. This is for you, it's the advertisement copy. The recording studio is also ready. The director wants you to get ready before he brings over the guests. Damn, this time I'm done for. Zhong Yi had only just typed out the words for, ghost blows out the light, without any structure or thought. He could only switch off his computer and go do the undoable at the recording studio. Sometimes, the one who knows you best is your enemy. That is a very true saying. Tian Bin keenly noticed Zhong Yi's abnormal actions and linked it to the quality drop in the recent two broadcasts of Late Night Ghost Stories, where stuttering and the wrong usage of words occurred frequently. Even the recording took longer, where it used to take an hour, it took about 1.5 hours to 2 hours to finish a recording now. Tian Bin guessed that Zhong Yi has reached a creative bottleneck or it was even possible that the novel had a problem. Looking at him now, it was obvious that he had no script for it. Ha ha, this kid is getting what he deserves. The story won't be able to continue on from here? I'll see how you get past this. Tian Bin was over the moon. He stood up and proceeded to the recording studio, ready to see Zhong Yi make a mockery of himself and get what he deserved. Recording Studio 1. This was the most prestigious studio in the station. It was bigger than the other studios by at least three times. This did not even include the outside of the studio. There was a small space outside of the studio where the telephone editor worked and on the other side there was a viewing hall. It had a transparent soundproof glass which did not block the view, space for 30 leather chairs on the inside and even a small conference table. The station obviously prepared this place for the advertisers who had a sizable sponsorship. Otherwise, this sort of a studio was usually only reserved for off-site interactive activities or management inspection use. It was a situation of great importance. And the pressure was greater, too. Zhong Yi went in with the equipment settings readied by a staff member who informed him about the differences between this studio and the others before leaving. Zhong Yi was now alone in the room and felt like he was sitting on a cushion of needles. He mumbled to himself, what should I do? Bullsh asterisk t my way through this? That won't work. The clients were willing to sponsor him because they have heard his program before. Just opening his mouth would let the cat out of the bag. Besides, the listeners would definitely not agree to it. Narrating while coming up with and organizing his thoughts? But he didn't have that capability, even if he hurriedly composed, the quality would be bad. All his ideas had been exhausted, Zhong Yi could do nothing more. He only hoped that the client would not tear up the contract. Outside. Viewing hall. It's over here. Please, come in. The door creaked and then Zhao Guoju and a deputy led five to six men and women in. Let's have a seat. Someone will get you tea. A woman said, Director Zhao, you are too welcoming of us. Another person looked through the glass at Zhong Yi, is that teacher little Zhong? That's right. Zhao Guoju smiled. Let little Zhong start, we will listen and discuss at the same time. Sure. I am a loyal fan of, Ghost Blows Out the Light. I even listened to the program late last night. I'm honored to be listening live on site today, a middle-aged man mentioned politely. They sat at the first row next to the location. They were from the Hua Tian group, operators of pawn shops, jewelry shops and some auction house businesses. Zhong Yi did not know them from his world, the closest to it that he knew of was the Hua Xia group's pawn shop businesses. Seemingly, even pawn shop businesses were altered in this world. Maybe the sponsored amount this time was too high. The contract duration was also longer than usual, not like those of a week or half a month. Because of this, this leading corporation gave the deal more attention. Five to six people from the marketing department, leaders and staff included, came over to discuss the contractual details. Likewise, Zhao Guoju also had his own entourage. Wang Xiaomai and several other radio host teachers also came along. The last to join was Tian Bin and he was probably uninvited. 
but as there were no restrictions on the attendees, the leaders did not mention it. After settling down, Zhao Guizhu signaled to Xiao Fang with his index finger. Understanding his intention, Xiao Fang also signaled towards Zhong Yi in the studio and did a countdown from 10. After so many broadcast sessions, the two of them could communicate with just gestures. Li Sai was the previous assistant for Late Night Ghost Stories. Xiao Fang was an assistant to everyone, also known as a helper to all. After Zhong Yi arrived, with the popularity of his program, Xiao Fang became his personal assistant. Her previous tasks were all handed over to other assistants, while she concentrated on her job for Late Night Ghost Stories. She was part of Zhong Yi's program team. By now, Zhong Yi had to step up. With a deep breath, he pushed a button. Three, two, one. The broadcast started with the opening, Hello, everyone. I am your DJ, Zhong Yi. Welcome to today's Late Night Ghost Stories. Casually stating the chapter's title, Zhong Yi started reading the story. As he spoke, the others were discussing outside. The contract has been prepared. Please take a look. Zhao Guizhu went straight for the subject. The woman who looked like she was the leader of the group said, Director Zhao, it's okay if you are busy and need to attend to your work. Let's not rush this. We would like to listen in, first. All right. Of course. Zhao Guizhu said. The women inquired curiously, oh, yes. I see. That teacher, little Zhong, does not have a script. Zhao Guizhu smiled a little, that's right. This is also a specialty of our program. Little Zhong has never needed a script. He's always working off script for the program. That can't be true, the women said skeptically. Several of the people in the pawn shop business group also felt that they were exaggerating. In the studio, Zhong Yi read, the fatty had a piece, a jade heirloom that he always had with him. This piece of jade belonged to a, a northwestern armies. Before he could finish a line, Zhong Yi already could not carry on. With his brain trying to organize his words and also trying to recall the plot's direction, it was beyond his abilities. A. Hey. What's the matter with little Zhong today? Zhao Guizhu finally realized something was wrong with Zhong Yi. Tian Bin had realized this beforehand and was laughing at him on the inside. He was gleefully awaiting to see the joke that was Zhong Yi. This was the purpose of his attendance. What's the matter? A. Why did he stop? The clients looked at each other blankly, not understanding the situation. Zhong Yi disguised his situation with a cough, switched off his recording, let's re-record this portion. I apologize. My throat is a little unwell, let me get some water. Zhao Guizhu looked at him, then spoke to him through the intercom, didn't sleep well last night? Don't worry, please rest for a few minutes. To help Zhong Yi smooth out the situation, Zhao Guizhu branched out the conversation and spoke to the clients about other topics. Xiao Fang had a face full of worry. Zhong Yi's colleagues also had looks of suspicion. A lot of the others had the same feeling from two days ago. Zhong Yi's story did not sound smooth. The novel's quality had dropped and there were stumbles in the story plot. Everyone wondered, was Zhong Yi a prodigy that has wilted? Is it that the story cannot continue on? Why did it have to happen at this moment? The sponsors were here today to sign the contract, so if any mistakes happened, then all that sponsorship money would go up in smoke. Zhong Yi would then have to bear the responsibility and this would also be a smudge on their literature channel's reputation. A lot of people held their breaths for Zhong Yi. Only Tian Bin had a different expression from the rest. He only wished that Zhong Yi would make a mistake. If Ghost Blows Out the Light really could not go on, then there would be no need for Zhong Yi's existence. Ignoring the fact that he would be cursed at by the listeners, the leaders would not agree to it. Even though over the years, late-night ghost stories had stories that were cut short, as they had poor ratings, none of them had been dropped midway. There would always be a simple finale to the stories. If John Yi could not produce a story today, then it would be a broadcast incident and nobody could save him. Chapter 27, Getting a Big Prize in the Lottery He only had a few minutes to rest. Inside the recording studio, John Yi was sweating profusely. He was really worried. No matter how he racked his brains, it was to no avail. Right, there was still one last lifeline. 
the lottery. He could only place his only hope on the game ring. He should still have the ability to have a chance at the lottery. Whether he could ride out this storm depended on the outcome of the lottery. Maybe he could draw an item that gave people mass hallucinations. Maybe an item that could rapidly increase his creative composition of words. Success or failure depended on this. John Yi could only go for broke as he opened the game ring's virtual interface and checked his reputation score. Reputation points, 305,931. Upon seeing this number, John Yi was dumbfounded. It took a while before he understood how his reputation points had increased so much. The first reason was the addition of reputation points from Xiaoli's suicide matter from the previous night. The program, Talk About the World, was also uploaded onto the internet. The second reason was the 30 plus reputation points obtained from the previous day's late-night ghost stories. With the rating improving by the day, there were more and more reputation points gained every day. The third reason was, of course, due to the Beijing Times report today. This was a major newspaper that had a circulation rate of a few hundred thousand in the capital. Even if half of those who had bought the papers had read Zhang Yi's news and only a half of those half had marveled at the two poems, or were impressed by how Zhang Yi used the modern poems to save a life, that was sufficient to add more than a hundred thousand reputation points. Exposure, achievements and fame added to his reputation points. Great! The reputation points were enough for him to draw three times at the lottery. Zhang Yi tapped the lottery purchase button and began his first attempt at the lottery. The needle began moving as he chanted, please not something from the consumption category. Not a consumption category item. No one could see the virtual game interface in reality, so he was not worried about it. But he was born unlucky. The needle firmly stopped itself in a consumption category region. Bada, a treasure chest, small, appeared in his inventory. Zhang Yi helplessly took out the treasure chest and placed it on the floor. Avoiding the gaze of others, he opened the chest. There was a little circular band. It looked like the halo band seen above angels in movie productions. The only difference was that the color was black. Unlucky halo, effective once it is worn. Lasts for five minutes. Triggering specific conditions will cause those around the player to enter a state of bad luck. What does this mean? It has the same effect as the unlucky sticker? Only that it's an area of effect type this time? What were the conditions? It won't be attacking indiscriminately, right? Zhang Yi did not study it much and first stuffed the lottery item into his game ring. Following that, he puffed on his palm a few times. It was too depressing. What sort of Sha'asterisk tea hands were these? He had drawn from the lottery four times since he magically obtained the game ring. However, every time it was a consumption category treasure chests. Even though the consumption category region took up the largest proportion on the wheel, it shouldn't happen all the time, right? At least let me see what stats category and skills category are. The probability of hitting the special category was too low, so he did not have any hopes for it, but the stats and skills category still had a non-trivial probability of hitting them. Again. I don't believe it. Zhang Yi frowned as he breathed in like he was practicing Qigong. After messing around for a while, he spent another 100,000 reputation points to buy a chance at the lottery, despite his painful heart. He clicked on the lottery. The needle began moving again. It was all random. At least, Zhang Yi still could not see any pattern up until now. He could only stare and chant, waiting for the needle to slow down before he could see what it was. Skills category. Stop. Stop. Aya, ah, yeah, it did not stop. Another consumption category. Quickly get past it. Just a bit more. The needle was obedient this time as it grinded forward by a bit. Move some more. Move some more. It's not enough. Almost got it. As Zhang Yi eagerly watched as the needle seemed to use all its strength before stopping, it suddenly moved that tiny bit as its final rally. Click. Special category. It had actually stopped at the special category region, which had a 1 to 2% chance of being picked. The heavens have shined their light on me, I managed to get a grand prize. Zhang Yi was finally delighted. The time for the lottery to give out its prize had come. 
there was no item to receive, nor was there a treasure chest to be opened. There was just a system message. Special category awarded, opening the merchant shop, adding the right to purchase item, memory search capsule. After that, the virtual games interface for the merchant shop opened. When he clicked it open, there was an item inside. Memory search capsule, effective upon consuming it. Helps the player search a memory or subconscious memory and permanently reinforces it. Lasts for 5 minutes. Costs 100,000 reputation points. John Yi still remembered the special category's introduction. It was written that it would allow the purchase of a certain item. It seemed like the method to obtain magical items was not just limited to the luck of the draw. He could also use the random chance from landing on the special category to give him the right to buy an item. He could buy an unlimited number of the items in the merchant shop, as long as he had the reputation points. He would no longer be restricted to the limitations of the random chance in the lottery. This discovery made Zhong Yi excited. Memory search? Could this solve the problem he was facing? Time was running out, so Zhong Yi didn't spend too much time thinking about it. He looked at the remaining 100,000 reputation points he had left and decided against the lottery. He could not afford it. As such, he opened the merchant shop and spent 100,000 reputation points to buy one memory search capsule. He only had a few thousand reputation points left as a result. Ding! With the successful purchase, the item automatically entered his inventory. Zhong Yi quickly opened up his inventory and, with a grab, pulled out a black and white capsule. It looked like something one ate when one had the cold. Gritting his teeth, he swallowed it. As he crunched on it, he felt his eyes go blank before he could even decide on its taste. His brain's activity suddenly increased, as several scenes flashed before his eyes. Zhong Yi was filled with worry about the, ghost blows out the light, script, so all his thoughts were focused on it. So with a thought, the scenes in his brain suddenly jumped to the scene of him back in school in his previous world. It was the weekend when Zhong Yi had just bought the entire, Ghost Blows Out the Light, set after school. It had books written in simplified script. The moment he reached home, he excitedly flipped through them to read it. One page. Ten pages. Twenty pages. It was all scenes of him flipping through the books. It was as fast as a movie playing. At this moment, the effective duration of the memory search capsule ended. Zhong Yi returned to reality from his weird memories. Only five minutes had passed in reality, precisely the effective duration of the item. However, the speed at which he thought was clearly much faster. The concept of time was completely different. In his memories, Zhong Yi seemed to have spent several hours reading. With a blink, Zhong Yi was delighted to discover that after reliving those memories of reading, Ghost Blows Out the Light, every word in the novel was remembered by him clearly. He could recite them from memory easily. The memory search had helped him dig out buried memories and had reinforced those memories. Although the memory search did not completely let him recall the hundreds of thousands of words in Ghost Blows Out the Light, it had reinforced about a quarter of the content in his memories. Previously, Zhong Yi had only narrated about tens of thousands of content during the earlier segments. Hence, with his current memories, he could easily narrate another 200,000 words with his eyes closed. It's done. There's no need to worry about the script anymore. This item had come at an opportune moment. Besides, as long as he had enough reputation points, he could buy an unlimited number of memory search capsules. There would no longer be any worry about trying to recall artistic works from his previous life. Chapter 28, An Amazing Unscripted Performance There was a knock at the door. Come in, Zhao Guoju looked towards the exterior door. There was a woman who had came from outside. On the other side of the glass, Zhong Yi saw her, too. He cleared his throat. He had seen this woman before and she had cursed him behind his back. She was Tian Bin's wife. He met on the first day of work. The woman was holding a contract in her hand. Clearly, she was one of the staff in the station. Either she was in charge of advertisement matters, or she was in charge of contractual laws. He had previously thought that Qian Bin's wife had come to meet Qian Bin to get off work together. So his wife was also a member of the radio station. Director Zhao, the contract. The woman took out a bunch of A4 paper. 
Zhao Guizhu took it over and acknowledged, just leave it here. We'll speak later. All right. The woman leaned her head to the side to look around. Seeing Tian Bin waving towards her, she walked to the last row and sat with her husband. Sister-in-law. Sis, you came? People in the literature channel knew of the duo's relation, as everyone knew each other. After sitting down, Tian Bin's wife did not hide her disdain for Zhong Yi as she whispered, why hasn't it started? What are we waiting for? How could her tone be good, when her husband was replaced by Zhong Yi? A literature channel staff member said, it began a while ago, but it seems like teacher Zhong's throat isn't good, so it was stopped. Tian Bin laughed quietly, it's not his throat isn't good. He can't produce anything. If you don't believe me, just watch. His advertising sponsorship will definitely be blown off today. That can't be, another colleague said. Tian Bin seethed, haven't you already noticed? Zhong Yi is already a spent force. He has nothing left sustaining him. How do you explain it? Tian Bin's wife laughed, I think so, too. A rookie can't have good luck all his life. He has to pay the price of being young. How can being a host be so easy? Only after a few years of grinding and being beat down would one gain acceptance. A moment of impressiveness is just short-lived. In the end, what matters is experience and background. When Xiaofang heard this, she was very unhappy, but she did not dare to show it. After all, she was a rookie, so she could only say, Teacher John will be fine. Tian Bin lost his smile, does his performance look like he is fine? Then let's have a bet. Let's see if he can pass this ordeal. Xiaofang remained silent. She was afraid, too. Teacher Zhong, you must not make any mistakes. What they said could not be heard in front, as there was a distance of seven meters separating them. Little Zhong. Have you rested your throat? Zhao Guizhu could no longer drag it out any longer. Seeing so much time pass, he could only ask with a frown. Zhong Yi adjusted his bearings as he drank some water. He immediately said, Leader, I can do it. All right, then let's carry on. Zhao Guizhu waved at him to begin, while his eyes seemed unsure. Tian Bin was thinking in his mind, what do you mean, you can do it? Today, I'm just waiting for you to make a fool of yourself. When you fail, the segment, Late Night Ghost Stories will be mine again. Tian Bin's wife also laughed in silence. She, too, was waiting for Zhong Yi to make a fool of himself. Zhong Yi paused for two seconds before he began recording, hello, everybody. Welcome to today's, Late Night Ghost Stories, segment. This piece of jade was given to his father by a chief in the Northwestern Army. Years ago, this chief had led his troops to destroy a gang of bandits. This piece of jade was worn closely by the bandit leader. Although it was a piece of jade, its shape did not look anything like it. Its shape was strange. Zhong Yi was no longer like the stammering Zhong Yi from before. His words were buttery smooth. Tian Bin was surprised a little. What the heck? How could he now narrate again? Oh, he must have used the break time to organize his thoughts. However, what could that little bit of time amount to? He will end up full of mistakes later. Ten minutes. Half an hour. Time passed. Tian Bin was looking forward to seeing Zhong Yi make a mistake. The married couple were waiting to see a show. However, Zhong Yi's performance made their faces turn green. Not only did Zhong Yi not make a single mistake, the plot and words used were excellent. It had returned to the high quality standard of the first few episodes. It was even better than the first few episodes. There was not a single re recording of a passage. It was as if he had God's help, as he chattered on. According to Aiko, the Savage's Ditch by Hei Feng Ku was actually previously called Corpse's Ditch. Further into the past, it was actually called Moon Holding Ditch. One episode was done. Two episodes were done. From 2 p.m. in the afternoon to 5 p.m. in the afternoon, Zhong Yi recorded three full episodes. There was no break in between. He did not even take a mouthful of water. He had recorded it all in one go. The Tian Bin couple were terrified. Zhao Guizhu and Xiaofang were stunned with their mouths agape. The five-member advertising sponsorship team was also dumbfounded. 
when the third episode was done recording, Zhong Yi still seemed addicted to it and was just about to carry on recording another episode. Zhao Guizhu quickly interrupted upon seeing this. He switched on the microphone to contact him, Little Zhong, that will do. Come over here, first. You still want to narrate some more? You still can narrate? Any more, and the sky will turn dark. Zhong Yi said, yes, before taking off his headset, with lingering feelings. The pawn shop business's woman stared while saying, the three hours of content was said without script. That's impossible. She would not believe it even if she was killed. She immediately stood up, I'm going in to take a look. She hated being deceived by others. It would be a great disrespect towards them and also an insult to their intelligence. Ah. Zhao Guizhu did not stop them, allowing to do so. The Tian Bin couple also did not believe it and they accompanied the sponsors and the leader in. Three hours of on-the-spot creation, without any mistakes or script. How did he do it? This must be an international joke. Immediately, a group of people poured into the recording studio as they looked all around. They really could not find a script. A sponsor guessed that Zhong Yi had copied the script into the computer, as such, he looked at the monitor. Good rascal. The recording studio's second computer was not even switched on. And the main computer was controlled with buttons. There wasn't even a display. Zhong Yi was wondering why so many people rushed in, eh? What's the matter? The sponsors were amazed, you, you really did not use a script? Nope. I just said what I have on the spot. Zhong Yi answered matter-of-factly. The woman did not utter a word for a long while, before turning her head towards Zhao Guizhu, let's sign the contract, Director Zhao. We are convinced. Only Tian Bin remained in disbelief. Your sister. How did you memorize three hours worth of content? Are you f asterisk asterisk king mad? Ignoring it being off script, even when Tian Bin recorded with a script, he would also make mistakes. How the f asterisk asterisk k do you not have any mistakes without a script? How could it be? Aren't you on the brink of death? Weren't you unable to narrate the story, just now? How did you seem to transform suddenly? Tian Bin's wife's expression looked ugly, too. Assistant Cao Fang glanced at them. You still want to bet that teacher Zhong can't do it? Why aren't you speaking now? Are you dumb now? It was natural that Zhong Yi would not make a mistake. His memories had been strongly reinforced. It could be blurted out without thinking. This was the effect of the memory capsule. Zhao Guizhu and the sponsors left to discuss the details of the contract. Zhong Yi looked at his watch. He still was not done with his narration itch. He felt that his mental state was still very good. So he decided to forego his meal. After drinking a mouthful of water, he returned to the recording studio and began rattling off the fourth episode for the day. Tian Bin refused to have his beliefs shaken. He insisted on staying behind to see how Zhong Yi managed it. Wang Xiaomai and a few other hosts did not go for dinner. They, too, wanted to see what tricks Zhong Yi had, rather, it should be said that they wanted to know what Zhong Yi's limit was. They were extremely surprised. Four episodes. Six episodes. Eight episodes. Zhong Yi actually recorded from two in the afternoon to ten in the evening. Wang Xiaomai had already left silently at 6 p.m. Tian Bin endured past 7 p.m. before going home with an ashen face. There were people who went for their dinner midway. Some people got off work, while some people came to catch a glimpse of this spectacle after hearing about it. He's amazing. Quick, go take a look. John Yi is still recording. Ah? What time is it? And it was done without a script? Of course it is done without a script. Damn. He has gone off script for eight hours. Holy shit. Is that guy still human? Did he eat some power pills? The news quickly spread. Many hosts and staff from other channels came in waves. Everyone came to listen with a look of disbelief. However, when all of them left, their looks of disbelief were replaced by looks of amazement, without exception. After that day, everyone knew that a man of God had arrived in the literature channel. 
he was a person who had produced a work on the spot, recording without any script for more than 10 hours without a mistake. If the entire station was added up, who dared to compare with him? Chapter 29, What is your most expensive dish here? A week later, Zhong Yi had been forcefully given leave by a deputy director for the Literature Channel. The leader nearly pleaded with him to take a break for two days with a confused expression of being at a loss over whether to laugh or cry. Why? This was because Zhong Yi was playing with his life for the entire week. Every day, he would reserve the recording studio during the day. If he could not get a long time slot, he would reserve a time slot at night. He would obtain the key from the relevant personnel to work overtime throughout the night. He had completely recorded the 50 episodes of Ghost Blows Out the Light. Together with the episodes recorded before, he had finished recording more than 60 episodes. The book was almost done. In between, the episodes that were periodically broadcast gave Zhong Yi a total of 200,000 reputation points. The few poems that spread online also kept contributing to his reputation score. All of them added up to about 300,000 points. Zhong Yi used those points to buy three memory search capsules. They allowed Zhong Yi to reinforce the text in Ghost Blows Out the Light. Without a missing word, he could naturally record without a hitch. As usual, he went off script during the entire process. In seven days, everyone in the station was used to this warped existence. From shock to amazement, from amazement to surprise, and from surprise to numbness. In the end, everyone took Zhong Yi's stunning performance for granted. There were only a few episodes left before Zhong Yi finished recording. In Zhong Yi's original world, a radio station had recorded the audio version of Ghost Blows Out the Light after its crazy sales. It was done in 400 to 500 episodes, so how did he finish recording in less than 100 episodes? This was because, in his previous world, the ghost story segment was called Midnight Strange Files. It was half an hour long. Only about 20 minutes, or even less, of the novel was narrated during the segment. However, in this world, Late Night Ghost Stories was a segment that was an hour long. Furthermore, Zhong Yi's narrative speed was much faster than the average person's. As a result, the number of episodes were naturally reduced. In the morning, Zhong Yi was washing up. The seven days of continuous work and disruptive working schedule had affected his mental state. Even while smoking to refresh himself, he would keep yawning. There was actually no need for him to work so hard. But why did Zhong Yi work so hard? There were four reasons. Firstly, he needed to be worthy of the leader's appreciation. Secondly, he needed to be worthy of the audience's love. Thirdly, if he finished recording the program early, he could get a bonus. As for the fourth reason, well, the fourth reason is that the first and second reasons were not important at all. After checking his salary and bonus online, Zhong Yi immediately cheered up. After realizing that he had not been home for a long while, he went down to take the subway as he headed to his parents' home. His parents lived in Kaishiku, a small neighborhood in Beijing that was neither young or old. Just as he arrived, Zhong Yi met a few of his old neighbors. A, hey, isn't this little Yi? You are back? I haven't seen you in a long while, an auntie said. Zhong Yi greeted, Good morning, Auntie Ju. I moved out to stay alone a month ago. I've been busy working recently, so I didn't come back. I heard from your parents that you are working at a radio station. Another old uncle flapped a paper fan as he said, that is a good place. It's paid by the public, so do well. Okay. Sure. Zhong Yi went up after making some idle chat. After pressing the doorbell, it was his mother who opened the door. She did not look happy, it's been a month. Now you know to return home? Zhong Yi gave a glance and gave an obsequious smile, I was waiting to return only after having some success. Where's dad? He isn't working today, right? Him? He's reading the papers. Mom kicked a pair of slippers to her son. Zhong Yi bent over and wore them. Upon entering the living room, he saw his dad sitting on the sofa, reading Beijing Times. Dad, I'm back. How's your and mom's health? Dad never said much, it's good. How's work? Zhong Yi seemed happy, it's good. This month's salary has been paid. 
together with the bonus, it's a total of 18,000. What? Mom's ears immediately perked up. She turned from sorrow to joy, why is there so much? Aren't you in your probation period? You shouldn't have established yourself, right? Zhong Yi smiled. The wage isn't a lot, but the bonus is quite a lot. There is a 5,000 contribution reward and another 8,000 performance award. With my wage and benefits added together, that's why I was paid so much. My son sure is good. Mom beamed, I already said my son will amount to something. Dad said squarely, don't be arrogant. This little bit of results isn't anything. Mom squinted at Zhong Yi and pursed her lips, hear what your dad is saying. Every night, he will listen to your program in front of the radio. Sometimes he would not even agree to lowering the volume when I find it noisy. That episode where you used a modern poem to save a girl? He also listened to it. He even praised your modern poem standard. He even recorded those few poems down. Heh. Anyway, I didn't understand that poem of yours. Dad's expression changed, must you say so much? Mom snorted, I'm just speaking the truth. What are you staring for? Do you think only your staring eyes are the biggest? John Yi chuckled. The approval of his family was his greatest encouragement. He said, it's almost noon. Mom, Dad. There's no need to cook today. Let's go out and eat. Since this is my first hard-earned wage, I must treat you to a good meal. Let's go. Mom said happily, all right. I want to enjoy my son's treat. Dad was about to say something, such as don't be a spendthrift, as their living conditions were not that great. However, with John Yi and Mom pulling him, Dad eventually went to change. Downstairs. Mom pulled out her cell phone like an avant-garde. Let me check what good restaurants there are nearby. John Yi asked, what are you doing? I'm checking the reviews online. I just learned about it from my colleagues. Mom began to clumsily maneuver through her cell phone's functionality. Zhong Yi scoffed and looked down on Mom, online reviews? You are too pass. What year is it now? What you are doing isn't scientific nor precise. Look at me. Zhong Yi took out a signing pen that he always brought along and threw it into the air. After the pen dropped to the ground, he pointed along the direction of the pen tip to a street diagonally across. That restaurant has delicious food. Mom. Dad said, as a college graduate, can you not be so superstitious? Zhong Yi stubbornly said, believe me. That restaurant definitely is good. I've never been wrong with throwing stuff, I or else, how do you think I scored such a high score during my English college entrance exams? The restaurant was not small and there were quite a number of people. The trio were led to a table in the back by a waiter. A waitress politely said, what do the three of you want to eat? Mom said casually, son, you do the ordering, but don't order things that are too expensive. It is unnecessary. Zhong Yi acknowledged. With almost 20,000, he was now a little tycoon. What was the use in having so much money? Isn't it meant to be used? Furthermore, he was now a public figure. He needed to maintain his reputation, so he said with confidence, what is your most expensive dish here? The waitress said with a surprise, the most expensive? John Yi nodded, right. Feel free and say it boldly. The waitress answered, deep-fried mandarin fish is quite expensive. And depending on the portion, a fish can cost about 300 after preparation. Right, we also have abalone. One portion is 120. How many portions do you want? Zhong Yi snapped his fingers, good, very good. Give me, a plate of Kung Pao chicken, a plate of shredded pork with garlic sauce and three bowls of rice. That would be all. The waitress nearly vomited out blood. After all that she said, he did not want any of that. After the waitress left, mom embarrassingly said, why did you ask about all of that? Zhong Yi coughed, I never expected it to be so expensive. Also, didn't you say not to order stuff that's too expensive? We still need to live. So we shouldn't be too extravagant. Mom said angrily, you are too cheap. Dad interjected, isn't that something he learned from you? You mother-son duo were born money-faced. Chapter 30, The War of Words on Weibo. 
Afternoon. As his parents were taking an afternoon nap, Zhong Yi was surfing the net in his room. After logging into his newly registered Weibo asterisk account, there was a verified label on his avatar. This was a verified account that the radio station had applied for him, for work purposes. The verification details were, Beijing radio stations literature channels late night ghost stories broadcast host Zhong Yi. Every radio anchor host had a platform to communicate with their audience. By promoting their programs and maintaining their image, that was also a part of their work. This world social media platform did not distinguish between Tencent's Weibo or seen as Weibo. There was only one, called Weibo. It was pretty much the same, however, there were some tiny differences in the details. For example, there was no way to display one's location. The reason was probably to protect one's privacy. Hello, Teacher Zhong. Teacher Zhong, I really like your program. Ghost Blows Out the Light is too good. Your poems are also too classic. If you need any sort of work done, please contact mobile number 13487637333. Ha ha, Teacher Zhong is also on Weibo? I'm Xiao Fang. Please add me as a fan. There were private messages, at messages and comments, totaling about 30 of them. There were advertisements, colleagues from the radio station and listeners. Upon seeing his fan count, he only had about 200 people. After all, he had just registered, so he could not have many fans. It needed a long period of operation. Zhong Yi picked a few comments to reply to. He also followed a few colleagues. As he browsed through this world's Weibo, there were not many major differences, so he did not find it unfamiliar. This was a very important promotional platform, so Zhong Yi treated it seriously. After giving it some thought, he decided to post his poems, Flying Bird and Fish, A Generation, the title S, If You Are Living Well, Then the Skies Are Clear, and the, the Song of the Stormy Petrel, that he had never publicly released. His fan count immediately rose. There were countless numbers of people rebroadcasting it. Let the tempest come strike harder? Wow. The Song of the Stormy Petrel is so well written. I like it. I already thought Flying Bird and Fish and A Generation were classic enough, but after seeing The Song of the Stormy Petrel, I feel full and delighted. This passerby shall become a fan. If you are living well, then the skies are clear. This is written so beautifully. Teacher Jong has released another new poem? Awesome. I'll prostrate in front of you in full admiration. He even saw some bigwigs leaving comments. For example, there was the famous producer Hu Fei from Central TV. He had rebroadcasted for Zhong Yi, I first liked Zhong Yi's novel, as Ghost Blows Out the Light was too original. It is totally different from the usual supernatural novels. Later on, I saw teacher Little Zhong's two poems. I greatly fell in love with A Generation. It felt like it was written for our generation. Today, after seeing The Song of the Stormy Petrel, this should be a prose. Having lived for so long, I have seen at least a few hundred, if not a few thousand prose. But this is the first time that I have realized that prose can be written in such a graceful and powerful manner. I also know the vice editor, Old YA, from the Beijing Times. I agree st strongly with what Old YA said that in a few hundred years, people might no longer have computers or cell phones and may even forget the dazzling celebrities of the past, to the point of forgetting things our generation think is unforgettable. But the two poems, A Generation, and The Song of the Stormy Petrel, will never be forgotten. I believe they will be passed down over as a heritage, one generation after another. Naturally, Zhong Yi had to reply as he modestly answered, Thank you for teacher whose affirmation. I'm not that noble or great as you described. I just randomly created those. Hu Fei gave an astounding approval, talent is probably innate. Some people might work their entire lives to no avail. Some people have it the moment they were born. Teacher Little Jong is just 23 years old? My son is 22 this year, almost the same age as you. However, Teacher Jong is already so cultured, while my son is playing on the phone all day. Sigh. People began to comment. My daughter is the same. She's playing with her cell phone all day. Right, young people nowadays cannot be separated from their cell phones. Even while they are eating and talking, they would still hold onto their phones. 
Upon seeing this, Zhong Yi left a comment. He used a popular online phrase in his previous world. The furthest distance in the world is not the distance between the flying bird and fish. It is that you are playing with your phone, even when I stand in front of you. P.U. Ha ha. I'm dying of stitches. Teacher Zhong is too cheeky. I never expected Teacher Zhong to be so humorous. He's a ghost story host and also a poet, so I thought he would be a particularly serious person. That was a godly reversal. Central TV's producer Hu Fei was also overjoyed as he posted a smiley emoticon, in a while, I'll show this to my son. With Zhong Yi's lead, many netizens began to spontaneously post modified versions of Zhong Yi's flying bird and fish. For example, there were statements like, the furthest distance in the world is not bringing toilet paper to the toilet. In the end, a generation was also not spared. There were all kinds of versions, such as, the dark knight gave me black eyes, but I use them to watch movies. If other poets saw their poems being defiled beyond recognition by others, they would be furious. However, John Yi did not. Not only was he not angry, he even modified his works along with the netizens. His level of self-mockery was high, which won the favor of many netizens. Teacher Zhong is really approachable. This is what a cultured person should have. Plus one. Supporting Teacher Zhong's creation of more masterpieces. At the same time. Today, Tian Bin was also not working. After his program was robbed from him, he would basically be resting for three days a week. He had nothing to do at work. In an upset mood, Tian Bin would drink alone at home. As he drank, he surfed Weibo. He, too, saw Zhong Yi's interaction with the netizens and saw his fan count increasingly rapidly due to him being so well-liked. In just a day, he had several thousand fans. It was nearly about to exceed Tian Bin's 20,000 fan count. Seeing this, how could Tian Bin feel happy? He nearly flew into a rage. Producing works without a script? Every word he says is classic? Tian Bin never believed Zhong Yi had this ability. He also bore a grudge, so without switching his Weibo account, he used his official, verified Weibo account to post a message. Some people may be able to jump for a moment, but they cannot jump for life. Do not be a villainous person intoxicated by success. Do not use underhand techniques, or you will end up suffering. He did not indicate who he was speaking about, but anyone who had eyes knew that he was scolding Zhong Yi. This was because after Zhong Yi was officially verified, the VIP introduction for Tian Bin's Weibo had changed into previous, late night ghost stories broadcast host. Tian Bin had his fans, too. Some people liked Zhong Yi's style of broadcasting, but there were also people who liked Tian Bin's program. Upon seeing teacher Tian post that comment, many of his fans immediately understood who Tian Bin was referring to. Immediately, they answered the summoning call and went on Zhong Yi's Weibo to begin cursing. Using underhand techniques. So this was how Zhong Yi got his position. Teacher Tian is right. I do not like Zhong Yi's program. It's practically rubbish. On the other side, Zhong Yi was still unsure of the situation. He had just went to grab a cup of water, but when he returned, he saw lots of criticism on his Weibo. Zhong Yi, you dumb pig. Calling for a boycott of Zhong Yi. What a rubbish program. Quickly stop broadcasting it. Right. Let teacher Tian Bin resume his hosting of late night ghost stories. After Zhong Yi traced it to Tian Bin's official Weibo account and seeing the comment left by him, he immediately sneered with anger. You are looking for trouble, aren't you? You dare to say I'm a villainous person? Before Zhong Yi responded, his fans and some bystanders had rushed to Tian Bin's Weibo to return their tirade. How can there be such a cheap person under the heavens? Publicly scolding his colleague on Weibo? Who is the villain here? Isn't it because of teacher Zhong's literacy skills being better than yours that caused the result of him replacing you? If you aren't happy about it, win the program back yourself. Can you only curse at someone behind their back? What a joke. And there's so many people chiming in? Are you all a bunch of people who like to curse? At this moment, the producer Hu Fei, who had exchanged some words with Zhong Yi on Weibo, helped speak out for Zhong Yi, people should have some bearing in their conduct. One shouldn't pull someone down just because someone is better than you. 
What a joke. Anyone with any smarts knows what is going with a glance. The two sides began to set off a war of words. Weibo immediately bustled with activity. Son, come eat some fruit. Mom shouted from outside his room, after waking up from her afternoon nap. Johnny had no mood to eat, I'm not eating. I'm busy. Mom pushed the door open and entered, what's the matter? Eat first, before you busy yourself. John Yi stared at the computer, I can't eat. A colleague is using his verified account to scold me on Weibo. His actions are too horrible. I need to deal with it. Mom was also enraged, who dares to scold my son? This little son of a bitch. But don't you scold back at him. He may not be right, but we need to make sure of the repercussive effects. After all, your status is no longer the same. I got it. Go back. Zhong Yi saw Tian Bin post another comment. Tian Bin, a person with questionable character is useless, no matter how talented he is. Zhong Yi sneered and replied, how is my character questionable? Can you please talk about it teacher Tian? Tian Bin took on an enigmatic tone in his words, you really do not know. All right then. He he. Zhong Yi, do not use these mysterious words to mislead everyone. Tell me what I did wrong, I want to know, too. Tian Bin scoffed, you know very well what sort of character you have. Zhong Yi angrily said, I really do not know. You can say it straight out. I have always done things with a clear conscience. By using this vague tone, aren't you showing the lack of confidence in your words? Tian Bin, he he. A villainous person is a villainous person. Beijing Radio Station. There were many people working in the Literature Channel's office today. A midday program's DJ suddenly shouted, Hey, quickly look at Weibo. Something has happened. Tian Bin and Zhong Yi are fighting. Ah? What happened? They are fighting? Let me see. Ah yeah. Teacher Tian is. What is Tian Bin doing? How can he say such things? and he is even using his verified Weibo account. This will give off a bad vibe. The listeners will even wonder what's going on if they see this. A few old comrades in the station were very displeased. Wang Xiaomai frowned, while Xiaofang was enraged. I'll let the leader know. Who is going to call Tian Bin and Zhong Yi? Tell them not to fight. Quickly delete their Weibo comments. Ring, ring, ring. A phone call came in. Zhong Yi saw the number, and it was teacher phone from the Old and Young Story Club segment. Upon picking it up, he heard teacher phone say, Little Zhong, quickly delete those messages on Weibo. Director Zhao has got wind of the matter. He's already going crazy and wants you to stop immediately. Any more of this will be detrimental to the station. Someone has already approached Tian Bin, too. Quickly cool down. We can talk about this in the office tomorrow. Zhong Yi said angrily, I've been scolded by Tian Bin and his fans all day. I have not said a single swear word or slanderous comment, right? You want me to cool down? Did I say too much? I was just getting Tian Bin to explain how my character was lacking. Why am I a villainous person? Do I have any other problem? Teacher Feng said, look at your temper. Are you being nasty with me? Kid, cool down. I'm not saying you are wrong, I'm just asking you to endure it. Teacher phone, it isn't my intention. All right, I got it. Zhong Yi said without any qualms. Amongst all the broadcasting hosts in the literature channel, his impression of teacher phone was the best. He was a veteran, but he had no heirs. He was kindly to everyone, so Zhong Yi naturally would not get angry with teacher phone. That's good. Calming down is the best. With that, teacher phone hung up the phone. However, just after he threw down his phone, Zhong Yi sneered at the computer. Although he had promised teacher phone to cool down, he did not have any plans to doing so. Delete my Weibo comments. Remain silent? That Qian has already said so much, how could I remain silent? Tian Bin's fans were still attacking him. Look, Zhong Yi is no longer speaking? He he he. This is because he's trembling from the scolding. An idiot is an idiot. How dare a rookie rob an elder's position. 
I really feel helpless for teacher Qian. Why did he have to encounter a person who did not know where he stands? Everyone, carry on scolding. Keep refreshing. Do not have any scruples. Let's get justice for teacher Qian. Tian Bin also fanned the flames from time to time to incite the people's emotions. He could not swear, but he could stir up his fans to curse. Some of those who cursed at Zhong Yi did not know the truth. They thought that teacher Tian had some grievance due to Zhong Yi. A large number of them were just following the crowd. The internet was a more open platform. Some people just liked to curse, so they would ignore everything else and curse first, without knowing the truth. After all, Zhong Yi would definitely not curse back at them, as he was a public figure. He had to take note of the effects of his words. This made those people, who were joining in the fun to curse, become more unbridled in their attacks. They felt good about being able to curse at someone who had better achievements than themselves. Don't dare to curse back? Indeed, if it was any average radio host, they would definitely not do so. However, Zhong Yi was not any average person. They did not understand Zhong Yi's temperament at all. Cursing at him for no reason? Stepping over his head time and again. He knew deeply what the internet was like. There was no reason behind today's matter. They were just cursing for the sake of cursing. The matter was not settled by who was being more reasonable, as it was meaningless in trying to be reasonable. Everything was determined by strength. Everything was determined by who was more fierce in their combat prowess. All right. I'll do a good job cursing with you today. Isn't it just swearing? You really think I don't know how? That I'm afraid of all of you? Chapter 31, Every Cursing Sentence is Classic. The war of words carried on. Tian Bin was experienced at Weibo, having used it for many years. He had many more fans, who were much more loyal. With his lead, he immediately caused the people supporting Zhong Yi to retreat. You can't defeat us in your curses, right? If you can't, then cut the crap. Still speaking up for Zhong Yi? All of you should just get lost, along with him. There were criticisms everywhere. Zhong Yi's fans had no way of defending themselves. Since someone from the radio station had called Zhong Yi, then there was definitely another person who had contacted Tian Bin. However, not only did Tian Bin not delete his Weibo messages, he even fanned the flames to cause more friction. Finally, Zhong Yi's wrath was unleashed. Are you cursing? All right, here we go. I'll count every one of them. Today I'll show you my warring skills. Zhong Yi's vocabulary in cursing was actually lacking, but he was not afraid, because he was not fighting alone. He immediately used all the internet catchphrases from his previous world and scolded in return, indeed, I'm a villainous person intoxicated by success, but some people are not even human. What are they even talking about? I want to know, who's whose Weibo is this? Are you verified as a VIP? You are not a VIP. You not even a V. From all I see, you are a P, fart. Your complex facial features cannot hide your simple IQ. When I see you, I feel to have a naturally superior IQ. Friends, do not scold them. Never battle with beasts. If you win, you are more beastly than beasts. If you lose, you are not even a beast, inhuman. If it's a tie, you are no different from a beast. Also, we can never beat idiots, nor should we try to reason with idiots. This is because they would drag your intelligence down to their level, then they would beat you with their immense experience. This world had its catchphrases, too. For example, your door is filled with parasol trees. This was due to something that happened half a year ago. Parasol trees were planted at mental institutions in the entire country and this was a widely spread practice. In the end, parasol trees were used as a euphemism to insinuate that someone was crazy. Similarly, Zhong Yi had the catchphrases from his world. These catchphrases had never been heard of in this world. Furthermore, this was the essence gathered from the collective wisdom of the masses. With so much knowledge gathered in Zhong Yi, how could he lose? With this reply, the replies underneath the post exploded immediately. Holy shit! Teacher Zhong is striking back. Ahahaha! Quick, take a look! It's too delightful. 
You are too awesome. I'm totally convinced of teacher Zhong Yi's talent today. His novel is classic, his poems are classic. He he, even his curses are classic. Wow, I think I'm in love with teacher Zhong Yi. He's too aggressive. Never battle with beasts. Ha ha. Beat you with their immense experience? What a godly statement. It is definitely a godly statement. Tian Bin replied. One could feel the embarrassment and anger in his words. You are cursing? Do you have any culture in you? Do you know your status? Supporting teacher Tian. A broadcasting host with such manners should be fired. What sort of person is he? How can the radio station hire a radio host of this quality? The moment Zhong Yi engaged in battle, Tian Bin's fans also helped Tian Bin battle with Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi answered calmly, I am not cursing. I am just narrating the truth and facts. I'm teaching everyone how to communicate with people like you. I have come into contact with teacher Tian. The first word that came to my mind when I saw teacher Tian was the word, well. Someone asked, well? Water well? A frog in the well, someone guessed. Only Zhong Yi was able to clear their doubts, is the word, doing things dumbly and unbecoming of their status, both horizontally and vertically. Immediately all sorts of emoticons of spitting out their water while laughing appeared below the message, ha ha ha. Zhong Yi did not stop, teacher Tian, I always had a question. Why did you give up treatment? Why? There are so many weapons in China, but why did you have to learn swords, Jian? Why did you not learn the way of the upper sword, but have to learn the way of the lower sword, Xia Jian are morally degrading? Why did you not learn iron swords, but have to learn silver swords, Yin Jian are morally lewd? Congratulations for becoming one with the sword today, commonly known as a sword person, Jian Ren a slut. Tian Bin, dollar hash percent dollar hash hash at. Your grandmother. John Yi, you are too harsh. You are a parasol tree. Dumb pig. Idiot. Tian Bin's fans immediately cried out with anger. As for Zhong Yi's fans, they were dumbfounded. They momentarily forgot to reply to help push the tide. They were only watching. However, Zhong Yi did not stop. He replied with sentence after sentence, You are the dumb pig. Your whole damned family are dumb pigs, asterisk teacher Tian, actually you shouldn't feel inferior. Even if you made a mistake to cause the leader to cancel your program, you are still a successful person. As a model case for being a failure, you are too successful. Everyone. Zhong Yi carried on cursing, there is a saying that is especially good. God said let there be light, and so there was light. God said let there be water, so there was water. God said let there be idiots, hence you were born. With a pause, actually to summarize, I shall give you a sentence, I bought a watch last year, W Qunin Mi Ge Bio. Some netizens said, ah? Buying a watch. What does this mean? Another fan of Tian Bin retorted, you can't even say your words properly, how are you even a host? Is that a sentence? The term to describe the quantity for watch is Kwai, to think you bought a, ge, watch. Zhong Yi said, try typing out the first letter of each word. I bought a watch last year. WQNMLGB? F asterisk asterisk K your mother C asterisk asterisk T, W Q N M L E Jebby. Ha 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 ha. Netizens immediately burst out with laughter till their backs bent over. Zhong Yi cursed Tian Bin for more than an hour. Not a single one of his curses were repeated and each was worse than the last. Tian Bin angrily said, you are so ugly. Why don't you look at yourself in the mirror? Zhong Yi typed with a smile, indeed, I'm not good looking. But at least I'm pleasing to the eye. As for you? Your photo can be hung on the wall to ward off evil. Hung above the bed, it wards off pregnancy. Seeing this sentence, Tian Bin nearly vomited blood as he went into a rage. Zhong. I'm irreconcilable with you. Hung on the wall to ward off evil? Hung above the bed, it wards off pregnancy. Poochie. Ahahaha. So damaging. So damaging that it reaches your grandma's house. Delightful. I never knew cursing can be done in this way. Teacher Jong is invincible. This sentence was actually a classic amongst swear phrases. 
once it was revealed, more than a hundred responses and comments surged in the next ten seconds. The onlookers could no longer sit still. With Zhong Yi leading the way, his fans who were pushed into a corner immediately turned the tides as their momentum rose to unprecedented heights. They began to swing the flags of battle for Zhong Yi. Tian Bin was still returning fire with curses, but he was no match for Zhong Yi. In the beginning, there were many Tian Bin fans who were helping their idol curse at Zhong Yi. However, Zhong Yi's combat power was too monstrous. He did not need the help from his fans. His tongue was like a warring hero, as he managed to silence hundreds of people alone. In the end, almost none of Tian Bin's fans said a word. Those who had joined in the fun to curse were attacked by Zhong Yi, until their intestines turned green. After a few retaliative words, they knew they were no match for Zhong Yi. They slowly disappeared, so as to not embarrass themselves. There was only Tian Bin who was retaliating with anger. He battled one against a hundred. After cursing away one, another came. The final outcome was, Zhong Yi's complete victory. All the onlookers on Weibo were stunned. What the f asterisk asterisk k is this battle power? Could swearing be so earth-shattering? This was the first time they had seen it. Only when Tian Bin was sworn at until he was reduced to a whimper did the crowd come around. Quickly, they began becoming fans of Zhong Yi's Weibo account in an excited fervor. His fan count surged to 31,000. With that, Zhong Yi's game ring's reputation points rose from several thousand to 54,000. Zhong Yi was speechless. Cursing could also bring reputation points. Heh, this makes me feel good. Zhong Yi was pondering if he should make a living through cursing. This reputation seemed to be gained for free. Could he become the world's greatest celebrity just from cursing? Chapter 32, The Popularity Gained From Cursing The victor was clear. The war of words had ended, too. Netizens were positively leaving comments, everyone was almost laughing. All in one wind, too godly. The things I saw today were too godly. Small hole 11, absolutely godly. Absolute idol. Such aggression. Zhongyi number one fan, this is a newly registered account, please take care of me. In the future, I will be teacher Zhong's brainless fan. To curse at such a masterful level, I can only use worship to describe my feelings. From now on, Teacher Zhong Yi will be the leader of our internet troll army. Might of a little warrior, seeing Teacher Zhong Yi's curses, I realize how naive I had been. I even boasted that I was a cursing specialist with no competition. But after seeing today's events, I've been humbled. I wonder if Teacher Zhong Yi takes disciples. I would like to learn your art of cursing. If I could get 10% of your skills, no, just 1%, I would not be afraid anymore while I travel the world. In the process of breaking down. God, what did I just witness? This Weibo account has almost gone up to the first page. What happened here? Why is the click rate for the comments so high? Teacher Zhong Yi's image has just collapsed for me. Is this the same teacher Zhong Yi who wrote Flying Bird and Fish? This is that teacher Zhong Yi who wrote A Generation? This is too much. I like it too much. Ha ha. Well cursed. Such kinds of people deserve such curses. Talent. This is what talent is. This cursing can even move the heavens. He is no doubt a great poet. Come on, how can a poet curse like this? To the previous poster, which writer or poet does not curse? Consider the most famous teacher Chen Qianmo, was his first poem not one that was used to curse too. It even had vulgarities. Everyone started to heatedly discuss. The center of focus were Zhong Yi's Weibo's curses. At the unit. The radio station's colleagues had all witnessed Zhong Yi's curses that had a touch of genius, some of them even could not hold in their laughter. Teacher Little Zhong has such an ability? It really is unbelievable, these curses are too humorous. Ha 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 ha. I've already compiled all those curses. Isn't this a little bad? The leader was so anxious just now. Why? Those curses are already unretractable. It's too late, we will leave it to the leader to deal with tomorrow. This time, it's really Tian Bin's bad luck. He actually met Zhong Yi, a person who would rather die than lose out. 
Tian Binshaw got cursed into a terrible state. Little Zhang Shaw is godly. Say, about all those classic amongst classic curse sentences, how do you think that he came up with them? Were they on the spot creations again? Right, that I bought a watch last year, sure was marvelous. He he. I prefer that line about, why did you give up treatment? It was so funny. After being cursed to such a pathetic state, I'm guessing that Qian Bin would have no face to come to work tomorrow. Teacher Feng was at a loss of whether to laugh or cry, this little Zhong. I already told him to delete his Weibo messages and not speak anymore. But no matter what, he refused to listen. Now we are in this state. Another person who had a good relationship with Tian Bin said, how can little Zhong do this? This will cause a lot of negative exposure. They might think everyone in our radio station is of such a culture. Xiaofang did not like what was said, it was teacher Tian who instigated the matter first, teacher Zhong was just in self-defense. The matter seemed to have calmed down, but in fact, it was far from having done so. Zhong Yi's famous sentences had never appeared in this world yet. However, in his world, every sentence was extremely popular on the internet. Actually, when Zhong Yi was using all of them to curse, he did not feel particularly happy about it. Why? This was because, from his knowledge, all those curses had already been overused and outdated. For example, I bought a watch last year. The people in Zhong Yi's old world had used it too much. It had lost its charm. As for that sentence about, never battle with beasts, if Zhong Yi were to post it on his world's discussion boards, people would definitely reply with things like, congratulations to OP for getting onto the internet. It was so overused that no one used it anymore. However, in this world, no one had yet to hear all these catchphrases. Hence, when Zhong Yi revealed a large number of them, they immediately caused an intense sensation on the internet. There were even well-meaning people who compiled a list of classic Zhong Yi phrases as they copied every sentence he used to let everyone worship. During this time, there were also many people in the same industry who replied. Keep calm. All of you, calm down. Watching. Waiting for new sentences. Has it already ended? A few radio station counterparts from other provinces and municipalities expressed concern. This sort of matter would not have been much in another industry and would not have made even a splash in their entertainment circles. However, in their radio station media circle, it was still quite novel. As such, it began spreading like wildfire as counterparts from other radio stations also spread this in an instant. Many people logged into Weibo to watch the show upon hearing this interesting piece of news. After seeing Zhong Yi's phrases, most of the counterparts only had one reaction. In the future, you could offend anyone else, but never a person like this. Your sister, your curses are so wicked. If someone had a bad heart, he would have died of a heart attack from the rage. The development carried on. People carried on replying and following the matter without any tinge of tiredness. Zhong Yi was like a fighter. He did not even eat dinner. He was waiting in front of the computer for Qian Bin to appear once again. He was prepared to engage in another round of battle at any time. He was not afraid of anyone. In the end, the other party did not even whimper, making Zhong Yi have a slight yearning for more. With that, Zhong Yi posted a final message for this matter and clarified, statement, My personal words are representative of my personal views. It has nothing to do with my respective radio station. I am not a person who liked to use vulgarities. However, if someone were to bully me, I would not sit idle. As for those people who tried to fan the flames and for those who scolded me without any provocation, I can only give you four words. Please, Q U, take, N I, good, M A, care, D E. The last sentence he used was also a popular theme in his world. The four words were still those four words, but the pinion notes were something else. Of course, in this world, no one had seen such a thing. People could not react in time as they had never come into contact with something like that. Please take good care. A. Why did teacher Zhong Yi suddenly become so refined? He's not refined. Ha ha. Quick, look at the pinion for, please take good care. Do not look at the words. The pinion behind. Chu. Ni. Ma. Da. Go. F asterisk asterisk K. Your. Self. 
P.U. There's a hidden catch. I'm dying of laughter. I can't even close my jaw. I really am laughing madly today. Teacher John Yi is too damaging. Whoever offends him won't have a good outcome. Asking for help from God. From today onward, Teacher John Yi will be my spiritual leader. The Word of God. Ha! Huh. I've already fan ed. However strong you are, there is always someone stronger. This is the first time I have realized that there can be so much knowledge in cursing. As above. This is the first time I have realized that cursing can be so artistic. After the Weibo battle ended, Tian Bin's side completely died down as Zhong Yi shouted his stance. No one dared to fight again. Before this, there usually would not be any end to a war of words online. It would just be one scolding the other, with the other responding with a curse. This would then keep going back and forth, with no way to decide who was the victor, as no one would take it lying down, as no one wanted to eat humble pie. However, today was an exception. Zhong Yi had managed to curse a few hundred people so well that they could not respond alone. Many onlookers who were watching felt their blood boil. If one man guards the pass, ten thousand are unable to get through. What sort of style was this? How domineering was this? The last curse had increased Zhong Yi's Weibo fans by another six thousand. This was just the popularity gained purely from cursing. Looking at the entire internet, Zhong Yi was the first person person to rapidly gain so many fans just from his curse words and not because of his target audience. Chapter 33, I guess I should write a self-reflective essay. Chapter title is a spoiler, highlight it to read it now, or see it at the bottom. The second day. Zhong Yi woke up early in the morning. Without eating breakfast, he switched on the computer at home. The computer in his parents' home was a locally made, Donghua, brand. It was also a brand that Zhong Yi had never heard of. It was cheap and its price to performance ratio was relatively higher. The only problem was it liked to hang. Checking online, Tian Bin's Weibo messages had already been deleted. Zhong Yi also began deleting some of his Weibo messages that he had posted the previous night. There was no other way, as Director Zhao had called him personally last night to rage. Everything seemed to be calm, but anyone who had experienced yesterday's war of words knew how thrilling the scene was. Oh. This year's online catchphrases? Through a Weibo link, Zhong Yi entered a voting website. It was the selection of the top 10 most popular online catchphrases that appeared over the past year. This was quite different from his previous world. The catchphrases that were popular were nearly all acknowledged by the public and that was it. In this world, there was a tiny difference. Many of the popular catchphrases caught on only through the voting of netizens. The result was quite interesting. If one didn't see it, they would not know. But just looking at it would give a shock. Number 1. I bought a watch last year, E. John Yi. Number 2. Please, Q. U. Take, N. I. Good, M. A. Care, D. E. John Yi. Number 3. Your door is filled with parasol trees, E from Netizen, I'm your aunt. Number 4. Teacher Tian, why did you give up treatment? John Yi. Amongst the top 10 internet catchphrases, John Yi's curses had been given tens of thousands of votes by Netizens to take the top few spots. The first, second, and fourth spots were all his. Looking further down, the rest of John Yi's other curses were hovering between the 20th to 30th spots. The votes were for them were also continuously increasing. Zhong Yi was immediately delighted. Especially because that, why did you give up treatment, phrase had Tian Bin's name in front of it. After the war of words ended, the newspapers did not report it. This was because Zhong Yi and Tian Bin were not very famous, so this was not considered news. However, there were some online media and other people who had participated in the war of the words that gave their evaluation the culture and quality of radio station hosts. A blockbuster war of words. A poet's counterattack. Weibo miracle. A war of words that gained the notice of tens of thousands of people. After a few simple sweeps of the news, Zhong Yi finished the breakfast his parents had made for him, before going to work. The unit. Upon reaching the doorstep of the radio station building, many staff members, who Zhong Yi did not know, were looking at him. Some were even pointing at him. 
That's John Yi. He is the one. Ha ha. Did you see Weibo yesterday? Too awesome. There was even a youth from the Human Resources Department who waved at Zhong Yi, Teacher Zhong, you came? Good morning. Zhong Yi blinked, clearly not knowing him, but he still politely greeted back, how are you? Good morning. Great, I must have become famous again. However, Zhong Yi, who wanted to be famous even in his dreams, was not very happy today. He bitterly smiled because he knew that this was infamy. As he approached his office, he felt more perturbed. Asterisk cough asterisk, he didn't know how the leader would dispose of him. Upon entering the office, everyone was already there. Ah, Teacher Zhong. Xiaofang was the first to see him. Teacher Feng, who was about to retire soon, said with some resentment, Young man, you. Why are you so impulsive? Other people either laughed or glanced over. Their looks became complicated when they looked at Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi said, Teacher Feng, it's not that I'm impulsive. It's just that someone was pushing it too far. He scolded me on Weibo for no rhyme or reason. He even led his fans to curse at me. How could I not fight back? Don't look at him writing poems and novels, in fact, those did not show his true side. He was extremely nationalistic and cursed at any grievance under the sky. This was this fellow's true nature. He was just a very ordinary villainous person. He was not as noble as how people thought him to be. Right, where's Tian Bin? Zhong Yi began looking. Teacher Feng hesitated with an odd look before saying, he's been hospitalized. He's on leave today. Hospitalized? Zhong Yi felt nervous. Don't tell me this bro had agitated him into such a state. That can't be, right? Someone from the editing department said, Little Zhong, you are definitely in trouble this time. Director Zhao said for you to look for him the moment that you reached the unit. Zhong Yi said innocently, I didn't cause any trouble. All of you should have seen. It was Teacher Tian who threw the first stone. You can't blame me for his hospitalization, right? Hi, the saying is so apt, N-O-Z-U-O, N-O die. Xiaofang was stunned, what does it mean? The other people were also curious, is it English? No. Die? What was that? Zhong Yi explained, if you read it together. If you don't seek death, you won't die. Teacher Feng spat out the water he had just drunk from his white porcelain mug upon hearing this. He began coughing, that mouth of yours sure is wicked. Everyone, how do you speak English at home? N-O-Z-U-O? N-O die? Upon hearing this, Wang Xiaomai, who was usually reticent, was also amused. After clearing her throat and wiping her smile, she went back to work. Turning around, Zhong Yi bitterly laughed to hide his anxiousness as he walked towards the leader's office. He knocked on the door twice. Who is it? It's me, Zhong Yi. Come in. Upon hearing Zhong Yi's name, the tone from inside immediately turned unfriendly. Zhong Yi carefully entered the room and saw Zhao Guoju watering the flowers by the window sill. He closed the door and said, Leader, I heard Editor Zhu say you were looking for me. Zhao Guoju said hoarsely, Do you know why I'm looking for you? I don't know. Zhong Yi feigned ignorance, Is it about the recording of Ghost Blows Out the Light? Don't worry, I'll finish recording them today. The recorded program can be broadcast for more than a month without a problem. Zhao Guoju turned speechless, Are you playing dumb with me? Zhong Yi could only admit his faults, Leader, I know I wasn't entirely in the right yesterday, but it was Tian Bin who first scolded me as a villainous person intoxicated by success. He even fanned the flames to get his fans to curse at me. Tell me, what should I have done? I could not have pretended to not see it, right? Zhao Guoju said angrily, he has his faults. You, too, have your own faults. No matter what, Tian Bin did not use a single vulgarity, right? What about you? Look at what you posted. Yesterday, the station's leader even called my home. He asked me what was going on. Do you know how great an effect that has brought to the station? Eh? Zhao Guoju placed the watering pot down and said, you do not need to explain any further. I'll write you down with a demerit mark. Well, then. Write a self-reflective essay. I'll decide after seeing the self-reflective essay. 
If your attitude is still incorrect, I'll add on more punishments. It's your choice. Zhong Yi was not willing to do it, Director Zhao, I'll accept the demerit mark. However, I will not write the self-reflective essay, because I do not think I did anything wrong. Zhao Guoju angrily said, you still want to legitimize your cursing. But Weibo is my personal space. I had also stated that whatever I said was my personal opinion and, as such, has nothing to do with the unit. Zhong Yi quibbled. How old was he, for him to still write a self-reflective essay? He was not an elementary student anymore. Zhong Yi would definitely not agree to it, as this was about his principles and dignity. You are still quibbling? Zhao Guoju stared at him. You can give me any punishment, but I will definitely not write the self-reflective essay. Zhong Yi said firmly. Zhao Guoju nodded, all right, then I'll leave your bonus for next month on the back burner. I'll hand out the bonus only after you turn in the self-reflective essay. Deducting his bonus? What a joke. How can a bonus compare with anything? Zhong Yi said without thinking, I'll immediately write the self-reflective essay. I'll pass it to you in a while. Zhao Guoju. Chapter 34, Rejecting the Leader. At work. Zhong Yi began working, so off to the recording studio he went. This matter was neither really trivial, nor huge. There were hosts on television stations who had cursed using vulgarities on Weibo, too. In the end, they were also fine. They, too, were given a warning and some disciplinary measures were mitted out. After finishing writing the self-reflective essay, this matter was considered to have a simple end to it. Of course, it was not that simple. For a short period of time, Zhong Yi still had to behave himself by tucking his tail between his legs to slowly let the effects wear off. There was no other way out. Did anyone ask him to curse on Weibo so vehemently? He had even cursed to the point of Tian Bin being hospitalized. He had to pay the cost of having so much fun. One hour. Three hours. Zhong Yi ended the first, Ghost Blows Out the Light, book. As for the sequel, Ghost Blows Out the Light 2, Zhong Yi was not prepared to narrate it. This was because he felt it was a lot worse than the first one. Zhong Yi did not want to take the risk, as it could affect his listenership rates. So he decided to just call it a day. It had finally ended. Phew, Zhong Yi felt like a huge burden had lifted off his chest. The remaining recording tapes were enough for late night ghost stories to be broadcast for the next one to two months. He no longer need to work overtime from day to night. He could finally take a break. Lunch time. At the canteen downstairs, it was crowded. Master, I want fried eggplant, fried meat, and two bowls of rice. After Zhong Yi received his wage and bonus, he decided not to eat instant noodles anymore. Finally, he was able to order a big meal at the canteen. Actually, their canteen's food was pretty good and cheap. Furthermore, there was a meal allowance in their salary. Zhong Yi was not in need of that cash. When he handed the 11 yuan to the chef, Zhong Yi felt like he was like a tycoon spending lavishly. This meal was so extravagant. Little Zhong, a person called out. After Zhong Yi received his meal, he looked towards where the voice came from, You are? The secretary of the station's leader called him over, Station head Jiu invites you over. Zhong Yi was puzzled. As such, he followed the secretary to a small cafeteria at the back. It was also a large lobby, but there were small partitions that separated the spaces. Right, it was similar to restrooms. Typically, only station leaders or channel directors or deputy directors had the right to sit in these small dining rooms for their meals. Previously, the small cafeteria was given special treatment. Things were done more exquisitely and fine, but as the higher-ups sent a note down to promote thriftiness, the special cafeteria was removed. The leaders shared their meals together with everyone. In a partition. Zhao Guoju and deputy station head Jiu were sitting opposite one another. There was another leader sitting beside whom Zhong Yi did not know. Station head Jiu, director Zhao, Zhong Yi stood there holding his meal, are you looking for me? Zhao Guoju pressed his hands down, sit down, little Zhong. Let's eat together. Station head Jiu has something to discuss with you. Let's talk as we eat. Deputy station head Jiu was a little old man. 
back when Zhang Yi participated in the recording of Talk About the World, Encountering the Suicide Problem, Deputy Station Head Jiu had also come. He had thus met Zhang Yi once. Hearing Deputy Station Head Jiu put down his chopsticks as he smiled like a chrysanthemum flower with his wrinkled face, I saw you queuing up for lunch when I was walking over. So, I got my secretary to call you over. How is it? I heard your program is almost done recording. Zhang Yi said without inhibitions, it's already done recording. Zhao Guoju praised, little Zhang had worked overtime for quite a number of days. He recorded dozens of episodes continuously. He's very hardworking. Deputy station head Jiu acknowledged tersely before changing his tone, the only thing that wasn't well done was yesterday's matter, right? Weibo may be your private zone, but your verified status also indicates our radio station. You are a public figure, so everything you say and do must be done with propriety, in consideration of the possible effects. Zhang Yi admitted his fault, leader, it won't happen again. After criticizing Zhang Yi a bit, the leader sitting by the side, who Zhang Yi did not know, pulled out a document. Deputy station head Jiu took it and gave a look before nodding. He handed the document to Zhang Yi, I was looking for you because of the publication of Ghost Blows Out the Light. You are also lucky, as the station has decided to help you deal with matters of publication. Zhang Yi was surprised, publication? Our radio station has a publication division? Deputy station head Jiu said, we don't, but we do all the work with helping you connect with publishers. This is the power of attorney. Take a look. If you are fine with it, then sign it. A staff specially in charge of contracting the publishing and marketing for Ghost Blows Out the Light will contact you when the time comes. You do not need to worry much. Also, we will give you quite a high price. 20,000 for the book. Zhang Yi was shocked, 20,000? Selling all the copyright? Deputy station head Jiu did not seem pleased with Zhang Yi's reaction, of course, we are buying the copyright. A rookie usually would not even be given any royalties. Also, as the risk is greater, how is 20,000 little? You are a rookie who has never had any experience publishing. 20,000 for the book's copyright is a very high price. If you get to know the market, you will understand. Understand my ass. You think I'm AF asterisk asterisk king retard? In fact, Zhang Yi was not intending to publish his novels in the short term. He knew his roots were in the radio station. He wanted to do his job well at the radio station, producing good results and becoming famous. There was no hurry in publishing until further in the future. But even if he was not in a hurry to publish, he was also a bit unhappy. Why isn't anyone contacting me for the publication of such a good novel? Are the publishers dumb? Only through deputy station head Jiu's words did Zhang Yi finally understand. It was not that the publishers did not eye his novel. They had definitely gone through the radio station first, but the station had never informed him about it. They did not seek his opinion and wanted to first create a power of attorney. The power of attorney had many words. It was about seven to eight pages long. Upon scanning it, the general meaning of it was to hand all the copyright of Ghost Blows Out the Light, including, but not limited to, the simplified and traditional Chinese movie adaptation, as well as the television drama adaptation, to the radio station. Finally, Zhang Yi would receive a one-time copyright fee of 20,000 yuan for each novel. Give it to you? Do you think I'm sick? You do not have a publishing division and are just an intermediary. You are taking my copyright to sell to another publisher to earn the intermediary fee for nothing. Why wouldn't I look for a publisher myself? And 20,000 for the book? I would not sell even if it was 200,000 for the book. Are you trying to wave off a beggar? Zhang Yi knew the station was conning him. Deputy station head Jiu must have already made an agreement with the publisher. For example, after obtaining Zhang Yi's copyright, they would sell it to the publisher for 10 times or more. They might also sign a royalty agreement with the publisher, obtaining revenue according to the sales. From the results of Ghost Blows Out the Light, it was definitely not a problem to sell at least 200,000 copies of the simplified Chinese edition. How much money was that? Also, if the copyright was in the hands of the radio station, then the revenue would be all theirs. Zhang Yi would have no right to receive any royalties. 
The most maddening thing was that they were even grabbing the copyright to the movie and television drama versions of Ghost Blows Out the Light. Isn't this a rip-off? John Yi said in a euphemistic manner, Sorry, leader, I do not intend on publishing it. Deputy station head Jules no longer no happy, this is for your own good. We are trying to help your book do well and also make you famous. Zhao Guoju frowned, Little Zhong, are you thinking of contacting a publisher yourself? The faces of the other three leaders by the side turned ashen, as they said bluntly towards Zhong Yi, you are still in your probationary phase. The station thinks highly of you, so we are giving you a platform for your development, yet you are ungrateful towards it. Don't forget that your ghost blows out the light was promoted by our station's programs. Our station has already produced a lot of momentum for you. You want to skip over the station to publish? Then shall we count how much the publicity costs? There was no doubt that there was a threat in his tone. If Zhong Yi did not hear this, it would have been fine. But upon hearing this, he was further angered. Aren't your words a bit unreasonable? Publicity costs? Then let me ask you, how did the novels in Late Night Ghost Stories come about in the past? Weren't they all very popular supernatural novels on the market? The station was using their novel's momentum to hold on to the listeners. They had even paid a considerable amount of copyright fees to the novel's author. So why have the roles been reversed when it came to me? You aren't paying me money, but now, I have to pay. Right, I'm a staff of the station. I have the responsibility and obligation. That was why I used my novel to help draw in the audience for the station. From the beginning to the end, did I say anything about the copyright fees? I did not want the money, but how did it end up being me needing to pay publicity fees? And you are forcefully buying all my copyright. Zhong Yi suppressed all his anger in his heart. He also knew that it was not good to go against the leaders, so he could only say, I do not intend to publish myself. I've already said, I really do not intend on publishing. The leader stared widely, then you can think about it now. Zhong Yi in a thick-skinned manner, I do not have any such plans in the short term. Sorry, leader. Zhao Guoju looked at him, little Zhong. Have you really thought through it? He was actually not surprised that Zhong Yi would not sell his copyright. This rascal was a person who said he would rather die than write a self-reflective essay. However, at the moment the mention of his bonus being deducted, this money-faced man had handed over a self-reflective essay in two minutes. To pull money out of a miser's hands would surely be extremely difficult. As they were speaking, they got the attention of quite a number of people nearby. Those people were listening to them talk. Deputy station head Jio laughed and seemed to be magnanimous, young people are indeed stubborn. All right, the copyright is yours. If you do not want to use your copyright, the station will not force you. Since the three of them had finished their meal, they stood up and left. Zhao Guoju pointed at Zhong Yi and said softly, You man, you. Only he knew how much thought the station had gone through regarding the ghost blows out the light copyright. In the past, the scope of miscellaneous business was limited to the copyright of audio books or copyright agreements with some websites. They would sell the radio station's high quality audio resources, however, the revenue obtained from this was not a lot, so it was not a major development. This time, with Zhong Yi's novel being so popular, the station's leaders had seen another opportunity. As such, they created this false pretense of the power of attorney, hoping to gobble down the copyright to Ghost Blows Out the Light, so that they could develop and expand their other forms of income, other than advertising. But who knew that Zhong Yi refused without a second thought? Deputy station head Jio may have made it sound unimportant, but Zhong Yi knew that things were not that simple. He was afraid that the station was about to apply some underhanded punishment. But so what? If I'm not selling, it means I'm not selling. Are you trying to steal the fruits of my labor without spending anything? Isn't this robbery? Even if the station found a reason to fire Zhong Yi, Zhong Yi still had something left to say, which was the line in, the song of the stormy petrol, let the tempest come strike harder. I don't give a f asterisk asterisk k who you are. Chapter 35, Hosting a New Segment Afternoon Break News was spreading within the literature channel. Old Wang, did you hear? Zhong Yi is done for. Ah? How can that be? Aren't his program ratings very high? 
it's useless, no matter high it is. He's not a pillar of the station, so would not having him matter? Is it because of the cursing incident? That can't be. Hasn't the leader already mitted out punishment to him? Because of the publishing of, Ghost Blows Out the Light, the station wanted to buy over the copyright. However, John Yi was unimpressed, so he didn't sell it. The leader was embarrassed. If it was just any other leader, it wouldn't be so bad, but this is deputy station head Jio we are talking about. The station's leader. If they would let him off, that would be strange. Ayo, there's such an incident. Right, he's done for. It can't be that bad? Cutting off the station's profit and long-drawn plans, how can it not be that bad? Watch, the leader will do him in, they won't groom him any further. Oh, what a shame. This kid's cultural upbringing is very good, he's a good sapling. I knew this day was coming. Zhong Yi doesn't know his place. He's a good person, but too stubborn. When you join the working world, how can your principles be that important anymore? He should know where to compromise and give in, otherwise he will suffer sooner or later. His, the song of the stormy petrel, was indeed good. I also approve of his literary skills, but that's only literature, only a poem. Work is still work, when you have to give in, you have to give in. Otherwise, if he follows his poems, let the tempest strike harder, he wouldn't need to come into work anymore. He would have offended all sorts of people. The radio station is big, but its social circle is small. With a little hearsay, everyone heard the news. When Zhong Yi came back, he was surprised to see Qian Bin. His hand was wrapped up in gauze, like he had suffered an injury. The moment he saw Zhong Yi, Tian Bin gritted his teeth, like he had wanted to bite at him. But subsequently, Tian Bin was smiling again, like he was witnessing a joke. He'd had a few drinks the day before and was not clear minded, so he picked on Zhong Yi on Weibo and even encouraged his fans to curse at him. Who would have known that in the end, he and his fans were outcursed by Zhong Yi? In his anger, Tian Bin smashed the ashtray beside his hands and accidentally cut himself. He even had to go to the hospital to get a few stitches. Tian Bin was so angry that he wanted to murder Zhong Yi, but who knew that when he arrived at the unit at noon, a surprise awaited him. Zhong Yi had offended the leader. This was what's called retribution, at least, that is what Tian Bin thought. His anger from before had also dissipated. Teacher Zhong. Xiaofang rushed forward, they said that you. Zhong Yi waved her away, carry on with your work. I finished recording the broadcast, go straighten it out. Teacher Feng, who was on good terms with him, also came forward, pulled him aside to a corner and spoke in a whisper, Did you really offend the station's leader? Zhong Yi smiled bitterly, I guess so. Teacher Feng concernedly asked, You are really great. If the station wants your copyright, just sell it off to them. It's okay to earn less, after all, your future's here in radio hosting. If you don't sell, are you prepared to resign? Zhong Yi replied unconcerned, why should I resign? The copyright belongs to me. If the station wants to shortchange me, I won't sell. I did nothing wrong. Teacher phone was at a loss for words, you don't want to stay on? Do you think you can still stay on? Why not? Zhong Yi rebutted, not only will I stay on, I even want to do well. Such was his temper, he would not have it any other way. Teacher Feng shook his head, but didn't say anything further. Being a radio host, Zhong Yi had pondered repeatedly before applying for the job. Of course, he wouldn't resign because he had yet to achieve the results and experience. The late night segment exploded into a well known program. This result was not enough. Although the late night program brought together many people, the audience base was still too little. As for those poems, at most, they could let Zhong Yi get around, it could not continuously bring him experience, nor fame. Zhong Yi's focus was still to gain more fame through using the radio station. At the very least, he had to win an award. This would be the very foundation needed for him to become famous in the future. Zhong Yi's horizons were very wide, naturally, he would not be stuck in the radio station. But deep inside, he knew that he couldn't make it without them. Right now, he would like to join the TV station, but that would require them to want him. Even if it was him, he could not become a TV host. 
the TV station was at least 10 times more competitive than the radio station. Lots of people were queuing up to join the TV station, so why would they want him? Based on this height? Based on this image? Bull asterisk 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 T. Even if he worked backstage all his life, it wouldn't be his turn. So what if he had talent? Even with the cultural support he had from his world, it would have little effect. To be a TV host, not only do you need cultural learnings, but also a mixture of strength and qualifications. This is why Zhong Yi felt the basics in the radio station were very important. He needed to hone his skills here, before he can continue to climb up. Suddenly, Zhao Guizhu entered the office. Director Zhao. Director. A few people hurriedly greeted. Tian Bin did so, too. Zhao Guizhu looked at Tian Bin, how's your injury? Tian Bin quickly said, it's not a problem, it was just a laceration. A few stitches was all it needed. With a terse acknowledgement, Zhao Guizhu glanced at Zhong Yi, who was sitting at this seat. Suddenly, he clapped to attract the attention of everyone, everyone, put down your work. I have two disciplinary matters to settle. Looking at Tian Bin, little Tian, although you are injured, I still need to give you a verbal reprimand. I have already received your self-reflective essay. Your attitude is pretty good. In consideration of your hard work and working attitude in the past, only one month of your bonus will be deducted. Never again. Tian Bin promised, it won't happen again. Also, Zhong Yi. Although Zhong Yi had been dealt with, Zhao Guizhu suddenly went back on his word. Little Zhong, your behavior was extremely bad. You used vulgarities and not only did you scold your own colleague, you even scolded the listeners who have always been supportive of us. You have caused an indelible effect on our station. The station's management are also taking this very seriously and have decided to revoke Zhong Yi's position as the host of Late Night Ghost Stories. He will become a stand-in host. The position will be taken up by Tian Bin. Here, I also want to warn everyone to remember that every word and action you do is representative of our station's image. Many people had already guessed it. However, there were still people who could not believe that the punishment dealt to Zhong Yi was so severe. Tian Bin was the most delighted person amongst them all. He immediately said, Thank you, leader. I promise that I will not disappoint the trust the station has put in me. Zhong Yi also never expected the station to be ruthless. Director Zhao, then will Ghost Blows Out the Light be taken off air? Zhao Guizhu said indifferently, Why would it be taken off air? Haven't you already finished recording? Once Ghost Blows Out the Light ends its broadcast, the next ghost story will be broadcasted by Tian Bin. Finished recording? This was pretty much slaughtering the donkey after it has done its job at the mill. Zhong Yi was vexed. This bro had worked overtime until 2 to 3 a.m. in the night every day over the past few days. He nearly did it without rest, but all he got in return was this. Not giving me the royalties I deserve, removing me from my post, yet still continuing to use my program to gain listenership for the station? One shouldn't kill after one has apologized. But what could he say? He was without any background or power. He could say nothing and could only blame himself. He had used vulgarities on Weibo, causing others to have something on him. Zhong Yi was a person who had a good memory. In the future, if he encountered something on the internet like this again, he would definitely, definitely carry on cursing. This was Zhong Yi. No one could stop him with something he wanted to do. I have finished announcing the disciplinary matters. That would be all. Zhao Guizhu was about to leave. At this moment, no one expected Wang Xiaomai to stand forward, Director Zhao, I saw the Weibo incident too. Even though Teacher Zhong had his faults, this matter was instigated by Teacher Qian. If the punishment for Teacher Zhong was so severe, I think it should be done so equally. We shouldn't let Teacher Qian go on a segment, right? Zhong Yi was a rookie who had no experience. His performance was just above average. However, Wang Xiaomai was different. She was the number one person of the literature channel. She was also a supporting pillar of the Beijing radio station. The words she said certainly had pull. Tian Bin's face flushed red and white. However, he did not dare open his mouth, as it wasn't his time and place. 
Zhao Guoju stared deeply at Wang Xiaomai, teacher Xiaomai, no matter what problems little Tian has, he did not scold anyone. He had still paid attention to the repercussions. Wang Xiaomai said, then I think this punishment is not fair. If teacher Tian can go on segment, then teacher Zhong should be given a chance to mend his ways. Teacher Feng hesitated before looking up, my old and young story club is about to be axed. I heard that the station has arranged for other segments to replace it. However, there should be about a dozen or so more episodes to be recorded. I have already begun the retirement procedures last week. It is quite pointless for me to host it any further. Why not let teacher Little Jong host my segment? I'm already old. My body is also not good. I really don't have the energy to carry on broadcasting. Zhao Guizhou's eyebrows ticked, old phone, there should be a beginning and an end. You have already broadcast your segment for five years. You want to give up at the final critical moment? Teacher Feng sighed, I think it's best to hand it over to the young people. I only want to retire peacefully now. After a few seconds of silence, Zhao Guoju could only say, all right, then. In that case, tomorrow, Little Zhong will host Old and Young Story Club. Dot. Since the segment had only about a dozen days left, it was pretty meaningless. Tian Bin and many others felt the same, too. It was meaningless. However, Zhong Yi did not agree. At this moment, he felt warmth in his heart. An indescribable feeling surged from deep within his heart. He had never expected that someone would help him at this moment. After Zhao Guoju left, Zhong Yi rushed to Wang Xiaomei's table, Teacher Wang, thank you very much. Wang Xiaomei said without expression, you had helped me relieve the problem on my program last time. Treat it as me returning the favor. Thank you. After saying that, Zhong Yi went to Teacher Feng, Teacher Feng, thank you very much. I really do not know what to say. Teacher Feng laughed, retiring tomorrow is also retiring. Retiring a dozen days later is also retiring. What difference is that to me? You don't have to thank me. In fact, I can't help you much. You are, in my opinion, the best sapling in the station. Don't blame me for always nagging you. In fact, I actually like that bad temper of yours. You are identical to when I was young. He he. I also do not wish to see you being put down like that. My segment will be handed over to you tomorrow. This segment is my child. You must treat it well. Even though it will be taken off air in a dozen or so episodes, you must do it diligently. Can you agree to that? Immediately, Zhong Yi felt a heavy burden. He said confidently, I can agree to that. Chapter 36, The Legendary Jinx Afternoon The air conditioning in the office had broken down. This crappy aircon, why can't it start? Teacher Wu, is the power line properly plugged in? It's still connected. It just can't be switched on. Phew, it's so hot. In the morning, a veteran broadcaster, Wu De Tao, had tinkered with it all day without fixing it. He could not handle the heat well, so after fussing with it until his body was covered he sweat, he eventually gave up. He turned his head to look at the people in the office. The clerk was not around. Everyone else was busy with their work. All of them were broadcasting hosts. As such, he looked towards Zhong Yi, little Zhong, the aircon is spoiled. Go downstairs to the front desk and get them to contact maintenance. Zhong Yi looked back, don't we just need to make a phone call? Wu De Tao said, we don't have maintenance's telephone number here. Also, we need to fill in a maintenance request form at the front desk to tell them which aircon it is. Zhong Yi was unwilling to do so, I'm still busy. I'll get to it in a while. Wu De Tao no longer called Zhong Yi, teacher little Zhong. Back then, he could chat with Zhong Yi. He had also complimented him when Zhong Yi's segment became popular. However, now, his attitude had completely changed. He ordered him around like a normal clerk. According to what Zhong Yi heard, he had good personal ties with Zhao Guoju and was a close associate of director Zhao. There was even talk that said that he was related to director Zhao's wife. Li Sai came back over there. He was holding onto a basket of letters. It was as if they had all discussed this beforehand, as he came to Zhong Yi and said, Little Zhong, the letters from the listeners are here. 
find yours and then give the rest to everyone. Zhong Yi retorted, giving them out? Me? Li Sai said, I still have other things to do. After putting down the basket, he left. A few days back, Li Sai had already took a softer stance with Zhong Yi. He had taken the initiative to greet Zhong Yi. After all, the power was in the victor. But now, with Zhong Yi offending the leader, not only was Zhao Guoju provoked, he had even offended the station's leader. Li Sai's attitude had reverted back to that of the past. Tian Bin also chimed in, as he pointed towards the water fountain beside Zhong Yi, Little Zhong, we are running out of water soon. In a while, go change it since you don't have any work to do now. Everybody is hitting a man while he is down. Zhong Yi let out a sneer. It was as if the entire office's attitude towards Zhong Yi had changed immediately. Other than three other people, Wang Xiaomai, Teacher Feng and Xiao Fang, the rest had all begun bossing him around. If they did not do that, they would ignore him. They did not say anything or greet Zhong Yi when they saw him. It was as if he did not exist. They were all experienced employees. So how could they not be aware of what was happening? The station was intending to strike down Zhong Yi. They did not fire him, despite removing him from his hosting program. This was to teach him a lesson, so as to let him obediently hand the copyright to Ghost Blows Out the Light over to the station. However, those who had come into contact with Zhong Yi over the past few days knew that with Zhong Yi's stubborn temper, he would never agree to it. Hence, in everyone's opinion, Zhong Yi's career as a broadcaster had come to an end. No one could save him. So why would they need to establish good relationships with him? Firstly, it was not necessarily. Secondly, they had to do so. They were completely different from Wang Xiaomai and Teacher Feng. Teacher Xiaomai was a pillar of support for the station. The station's management attached great importance to her, so no one would dare touch her. Teacher Feng was about to retire in a few days. He was also an old comrade that had worked in the station for decades. So everyone had to give him face. Besides, he was about to retire, so what could you do? The other people were different. They still had to carry on working under Deputy Station Head Jiao and Director Zhao for a long time to come. Since the leader had ordered a gag order, would they mingle with Zhong Yi in a friendly manner? Do you think they felt they had lived too long? In an afternoon, Zhong Yi could be said to have been bossed around everywhere. Xiao Fang, who had just returned after finishing her work, saw how Zhong Yi was treated the moment she entered the office. Her eyes turned red with anger. Little Zhong, what's the matter with you? Didn't I get you to change the water jug? Since you don't have any work now, why are you putting on airs? Wu Ditao and Tian Bin began echoing each other. Even Li Sai, who was a small assistant, looked down on Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi had been completely marginalized. Teacher Phone could not take it any longer, aren't all of you also very free? If you have the energy to boss others around, why don't you make the phone call to solve it yourself? Teacher Phone, you are still speaking up for him? Wu Ditao was also annoyed by Zhong Yi. Look at him, does he even look like he is giving the respect a rookie should give to an elder? Xiao Fang was also bursting with anger, all of you are just taking advantage of your seniority to bully others. Tian Bin had also endured Xiao Fang for a long time, do you think a lowly clerk like you has the right to speak? After being shouted at, Xiao Fang nearly teared up. She felt wronged. Zhong Yi's temper also began boiling. This was the first time he opened his mouth, what are you shouting for? Just because your voice is loud. If you have anything to say, say it right at me. Why are you oppressing a young lady? Say it at me. Come. Zhong Yi slammed the table. He turned the atmosphere tense. Immediately, there was silence. You. Tian Bin did not shout back at Zhong Yi. He was mentally scarred after the war of words last night. He knew he could not win against Zhong Yi in a battle of words. The sound of footsteps could be heard as Zhao Guoju came out from his office, I could hear all of you shouting from outside. What are you doing? Do you think this is a house that belongs to all of you? This is an office. It is where you work. Although he had used the words, all of you, Zhong Yi knew that he was saying it to him. He, I ignored all of you, and to think all of you thought there was no end to it. Any Tom, Dick and Harry wants to step on me? 
Did I provoke all of you? Zhong Yi did not shout back at Zhao Guoju. In that second, he recalled the item that he had obtained from the lottery a few days ago. It was the one-time consumable item he had obtained while recording in front of the sponsors, the unlucky halo. Actually, Zhong Yi did not understand the use of such an item. He had not planned on using it. However, he wanted to try using it today. As such, he opened his game rings interface and took out the black angel-like halo from his inventory. He followed the instructions to wear it on his head. The halo began spinning, as an invisible wave spread out into the surroundings, forming a large domain. Ding! Unlucky halo in effect. Effective for 5 minutes. Countdown begins. The item's description was, triggering certain conditions will allow everyone around the player to enter a state of bad luck. Zhong Yi wanted to see what the condition was. After using it, he looked towards the people around him. However, he realized nothing had changed. Everyone was still fine. What the heck? The item had no effect. One minute later, Zhao Guoju left. Just as Zhong Yi was feeling depressed over it, Wu Tao turned forceful once again. The air conditioner was still not working after he tinkered with it. He shouted, Zhong Yi, are you going or not? Zhong Yi retorted back, don't you have legs? Kid, are you picking a quarrel? Wu Tao raged. However, just as he was about to reprimand Zhong Yi, sparks from the air conditioner's power source jumped out. It was as if it had short-circuited. With a buzz, it splashed onto Wu Tao's hands. Wu Tao gave out a terrifying cry as his body tensed up for a second. Only after the current left his body did he slump to the ground. Some of his hair was standing from being electrocuted. He was dazed from the shock. Aya! Teacher Wu! How are you? This crappy aircon. I already said we should have changed it. Li Sai pointed at Zhong Yi as he reprimanded, Teacher Wu told you to go to the front desk to file the maintenance report. But you didn't go. Look at what happened. Just as Li Sai finished speaking, the glass pane on the window beside him shattered without any warning. A fluorescent colored rubber ball had flown in. It was one of those balls that could bounce up very high when thrown at the ground. Some naughty child must have thrown it, downstairs. Unfortunately, it had smashed into their office's window, straight into Li Sai's forehead. As the elasticity of the rubber ball was very great, a thud, followed by a painful cry, was heard as Li Sai fell to the ground. Li Sai. Who threw it? Are you all right? Tian Bin took this opportunity to shout at Zhong Yi, look at what you have done. All of this is because of you. Li Sai's forehead was bleeding slightly. The glass fragments had cut him, but it was not very serious. Zhong Yi laughed with anger, because of me? A child throwing something downstairs is because of me? The electrical leakage of the aircon is because of me? Everything that goes wrong is because of me? What sort of logic is that? Just as Tian Bin was about to shout again, the water fountain beside him, which did not have much water left in it, let out an explosive sound. Boom. The pipe broke and boiling hot water from within came splashing down onto Tian Bin's feet. Tian Bin yelled out, as he fell to the ground, while holding his foot. Thankfully, due to his clothes, he had not been badly scalded. However, after taking off his socks, he realized that a large portion of his foot was now red. He gritted his teeth from the pain. Ah! Outside, Tian Bin's wife, who also worked in the station, happened to come in. Seeing her husband grimacing in pain on the ground in front of Zhong Yi, she immediately went into a craze without a second thought, Zhong, what did you do? You dare to hit someone? Teacher Feng immediately said, it wasn't little Zhong. Tian Bin's wife ignored it as she swung the plastic folder she held in her hands right at Zhong Yi. Before the folder could be thrown, she lost her balance. Her eight or nine centimeter high heels caused her body to form an angle with the ground. Bada! The heel broke. Tian Bin's wife twisted her foot as she fell to the ground. She was wearing a skirt today. It was also a tight skirt, so this got good with a tearing sound. Tian Bin's wife's skirt tore. It went from bottom to top. A pair of red lacy underwear was suddenly exposed in front of everyone. Tian Bin was dumbfounded. 
Li Sai was alarmed. Wu De Tao was dazed. Everyone was stunned. Zhong Yi heard the game ring indicating that the unlucky halo's effects had ended before he came around. As the person closest, he showed his humanitarian spirit. He quickly threw his overcoat onto where Tian Bin's wife had exposed herself. He, too, felt speechless. Immediately, he turned towards Tian Bin, Li Sai and Wu De Tao, are all of you all right? I have some band-aids here. A. Hey. Can you get up? Do you need to go to the hospital? He now understood that the condition needed for the unlucky halo to work was if someone had taken the initiative to mess with the player. Nothing happened in the first minute. However, the moment Wu De Tao found fault with him, and when Tian Bin and Li Sai began oppressing Zhong Yi, the unlucky halo activated its effects. As Zhong Yi spoke, no one answered. Everyone was looking at Zhong Yi, as if he was Hades. Teacher Wu got electrocuted. Li Sai got hit by a bouncing ball from downstairs. Teacher Tian got hit to the floor by a water fountain. Teacher Tian's wife twisted her ankle by her own high heels. In that split second, many people recalled the strange incident of Tian Bin falling to the ground three times in the office. He had stepped on a lunchbox lid. The fluorescent light tube's explosion. It was too much a coincidence. A UAF asterisk asterisk King Jinx from the stars. In that instant, at least four colleagues who were beside Zhong Yi dodged to a distance about two meters away from him instinctively. No one dared to approach him. Chapter 37, my segment will not go off air. The next morning. A superstition was spread through the unit by word of mouth. Hey, have you heard about Zhong Yi? The one whose poem went in the papers? The one that cursed online? Right, that's him. Everyone is saying he's odd. It's like he knows some evil mystic techniques. Ha ha, what day and age is it? Why are you still so superstitious? How can that be? Even if his ghost blows out the light is so well written, it is just a novel. You don't know what happened at the literature channel. A few people who offended Zhong Yi all encountered bad luck. One got scalded by hot water, one got electrocuted by the aircon, another got hit by a bouncing ball from out the window and another one twisted her ankle because of her heels. And finally, falling down repeatedly after a fluorescent light tube exploded. How do you explain this? Why were all those who did not offend him all right? Ah? There was such a thing? Why would I lie to you? Everyone is talking about it. Old son, if you see Zhong Yi in the future, stay far away from him. This guy is really strange. Two people in the music channel whispered. This similar scene happened in many parts of the radio station. Today, Zhong Yi showed up late. When he reached upstairs, people had already begun working, so the corridor was empty. When Zhong Yi reached the door to the literature channel's office, he heard Zhao Guizhou's voice coming from within. He pushed open the door, sorry, there was a traffic jam. This rascal, of course, was not in a traffic jam. He took the subway to work. He had overslept. It was also because he felt like slacking off at work. He was furious with the way the management and his colleagues had treated him. Since his segment had been taken away from him, he no longer had much passion for work. The moment he appeared, the entire office turned silent. Every pair of eyes landed on him. Zhong Yi felt a bit creeped out as he gave a cough before returning to his seat. Only then did he see a youth standing beside Zhao Guoju. He was about the same age as Zhong Yi. He was in his early twenties and was very handsome. He was the type that one would consider a standard good-looking guy. His hair was short, he was 1.8 meters tall and a bit thin. Zhao Guoju pretended that he did not see Zhong Yi, as he carried on, I've already said what I need to say. Today, I'll introduce to everyone a newcomer, Jia Yang. He is a fresh graduate and his broadcasting ability is excellent. From today, everyone will be colleagues. When Old and Young Story Club finishes next week, that time slot will be replaced by a new segment, Soaring Youth. This segment has been planned over a long period of time by the station, and having spent large amounts of money. The position of a broadcasting host will be handed over to Jio Yang. Teachers, please guide him, so that little Jio can do well. Everyone immediately applauded. 
Jia Yang took the opportunity to speak. Seniors, in the future, I hope you would correct me if there is anything I'm lacking with. Your office seat. Zhao Guoju searched around as he looked towards Zhong Yi, little Zhong, go sit with teacher Feng. Teacher Feng's desk is quite large, so grab a chair there. Little Jiao, in the future, this will be your office desk. Work hard and don't let us down. Jiao Yang said, yes, I will, Director Zhao. There were no more desks in the office, so Zhong Yi was thrown away. Zhong Yi could not help but laugh deep down. Surprisingly, he did not say a word as he moved his stuff and stood up. Just as Zhong Yi's items was about to lose balance to the point of nearly touching a passing by Tian Bin's arm, it was as if Tian Bin was a cat that had its tail stepped on. His hair stood up as he hurriedly retreated away. The chair under his ass even pulled back with a screeching noise. Zhong Yi! He carried on walking. When he walked past Li Sai, whose forehead was covered by a piece of gauze, he immediately turned sideways. It was as if there was a danger zone within a one-meter radius of Zhong Yi, so one needed to stay at least two meters away. On his way, Zhong Yi sure felt it was lively. Everywhere he passed by, his colleagues would all dodge. It was as if they were shunning the plague. Holy sure asterisk T. Must all of you go to that extent? Zhong Yi was the person who felt most speechless. Similarly, the newcomer, Jiu Yang, was also speechless. He was unaware of what was happening, having just arrived at the unit. Seeing everyone's attitude towards Zhong Yi, he was wondering, just who is this man? Some people were unpopular, but who the f asterisk asterisk k has seen such an unpopular person? How unpopular are you? The newcomer's introduction carried on. Zhong Yi was in no mood to listen as he whispered to teacher Feng, sorry, teacher Feng. Both of us need to squeeze together at a table. What the heck? Who is that person? It seems the leader highly appreciates him. Teacher Phone whispered back, I heard that he is a relative of Deputy Station Head Jia. Both of them have the surname, Jia? No wonder. Zhong Yi was enlightened. He had been forced to his current state all because of Deputy Station Head Jia. Of course, he did not have a good impression of Jia Yang. After completing the procedures, Jiu Yang had officially entered the profession. He also rushed to form bonds with his colleagues. A few young ladies in the station even rushed forward to chat with him happily. Male colleagues also had a good chat with him. Without asking, all of them knew that he was a relative of Deputy Station Head Jiu. Even if one did not build a good relationship with him, he was not someone they could afford to offend. If he were to speak ill of you in front of the leader, then you would be in trouble. Little Jia, if you have anything you do not know, feel free to ask me. Sure thing, teacher Wu. Sorry for troubling you. There's no need to stand on ceremony. We are a family the moment you entered this office. Only Zhong Yi and a small minority of people ignored Jia Yang, as they did what they had to do. Jia Yang was still all right in the beginning. After humbly interacting with his colleagues, he looked around and came to teacher Feng, may I ask if you are teacher Feng? Teacher Feng nodded and shook hands with him, that's me. Hello. The leader has arranged for me to take over your segment, so I will need to consult you if there's anything I do not understand. Jia Yang said, smiling. Teacher Feng smiled slightly, sure. No problem. However, the tone in Jia Yang's next sentence changed, I have already planned the theme for two episodes of the program. Soaring Youth is a show that has to do with stories and matters regarding youth and society, so I actually have a slight problem. As my theme is more pertinent to actual matters, you should know that the popularity of the topic is limited. After a while, it would lose its popularity, so it cannot be delayed. I heard from the station that you would be retiring. Hence, I'm asking for your opinion if I can begin broadcasting my program this coming Monday. If it is delayed another 10 days or so, then what I've come up with might not be relevant anymore. Teacher Phone, who was still holding his hand, turned stiff, you are telling me to end Old and Young Story Club early. That's my intention. Ending a show 10 episodes early wouldn't make much of a difference. I think we should be looking forward. I also hope that my segment for that time slot would have a higher listenership rate. Jia Yang said in a dignified manner. Teacher Feng's expression sank, impossible. Teacher Feng was the most senior person in the office. 
he was a nice guy and had always been well liked. A few old comrades who had good relations with teacher phone could not bear listening any further. Little Jio, what's the meaning of this? Are you trying to put on airs, having just arrived? The ending to the segment was decided by the leader, do you think you can change as you wish? Jio Yang hurriedly said, teachers, you have misunderstood what I meant. I absolutely do not have such a thought. I only want to make my segment do well. I have already told the leader about my thoughts. The leader told me to discuss it with teacher phone, so I came over to ask. The first two episodes really need to be expedited. Wang Xiaomai frowned, and said to him, expedited? Then why don't you adjust your own segment? If it's old, let it go. Can't you create something new? Why must you adjust someone else's segment? There were people who helped Jiu Yang. Tian Bin said, ending early or late will have the same outcome. Wu Tao also said, little Jiu is a newcomer. We should give him room for opportunities. The future world belongs to young people like him. It isn't such a serious matter, right? The sounds of sparse footsteps from outside could be heard. What's the matter? What's the ruckus about? A management inspection team had arrived. The inspections by the higher-ups had no fixed schedule. It purely depended on the mood of the leader. Every now and then they would take their rounds. Station head Jio. Station head Jio. Chief Zhong. Everyone stood up. Deputy station head Jio asked in a long tone, what's going on? Jio Yang saw his grandfather, but he pretended not to know him. He then explained what had happened. Deputy station head Jio gave a long, oh, and put his foot down, the ending time of the segment was just preliminarily decided. It can be adjusted at any time. Since your segment has its requirements, then let's push it forward by a week. Looking towards teacher phone, old phone, can you make way for the newcomer, please? What else could teacher phone say? His face turned pale with anger. Just as what he said to Zhong Yi, he had always treated his segment as his child. As its listenership had always been around last, there was no way to help it if it were to be axed. However, just because he was a relative of the station's leader, the decided ending date was overturned? I still have not retired yet. Now you are sending me off already? The matter was settled. The inspecting management left. Jiu Yang got his wishes, sorry, teacher phone. My segment is really in a rush. Please don't bother about me. About the handing over of the segment. Zhong Yi very impolitely interrupted him. He was already mad while watching from the side. The moment he spoke, he said some harsh words, old and young story club will be mine from today onwards. Anything you need to say should be said to me. However, you don't have to say any more, nor do you need to consider the handing over of segments. I can solemnly tell you that this segment, Old and Young Story Club, will not end its broadcast. From today forward, I will let the segment reach greater heights. As for you, take a number and honestly queue up. It's not your turn yet. In the future, it will still not be your turn either. So there's no need to be impatient. What? Old and Young Story Club will not end its broadcast? Tian Bin nearly laughed out loud after hearing this. Could you change what the leader has already decided? Jiu Yang also found it ridiculous, I've heard that you are the previous host of Late Night Ghost Stories, Zhong Yi, right? I really do not know what you are talking about. He did not know, neither did anyone else. Would not hand it over. Would not end its broadcast. Are you dreaming? This is already a sure thing. How are you going to reverse the situation? Do you think you can let Old and Young Story Club go from last to first in listenership rates? Today was Wednesday. There were only five days left until Sunday. You have really made a hilarious joke. You really aren't afraid of saying anything? Chapter 38, John Yi narrates Snow White. People scattered. They all returned to their seats. No one cared about the harsh words Zhong Yi said. This was because, be it Tian Bin, Jiu Yang or Wang Xiaomai and company, everyone knew that it was impossible. Not even Zhong Yi, even a famous broadcasting host in the industry, with an extreme amount of fame would not be able to revive, old and young story club, from the dead in five days. Everyone worked in the same industry. 
they knew the limitations and bottlenecks of the segment. Why was Old and Young Story Club always low on the ratings? This was probably fated. This segment was in the afternoon time slot, which was 12 noon to 1 p.m. The segment was to tell stories like children's fairy tales. From the moment the segment was established, it already had a pitfall and a limitation. As a result, this segment had never become popular. In recent years, it carried on returning low ratings. Why? This was because it was no longer like years ago. There was too much information in present-day society. Communication methods and technology were improving by the day. People no longer used the radio to obtain information. Typically, children were still in school during this afternoon time slot, other than during winter and summer breaks. Those who were not in school, because they were too young, would not be able to understand the stories. Those who were in school did not have the time to listen. This created this awkward situation. Furthermore, children's literature was becoming more and more downtrodden. Be it the quality or quantity of works, they were all decreasing. If one carefully counted, the more famous new fairy tales this year only included, Can Kites Fly, and Tong Tong's Day. However, these two stories could not be split up and broadcast over an entire year, right? Children might not even listen to it. The same old stories were listened to over and over again. Those which were famous had been heard by everyone. Those that were not famous were not well liked by everyone. So in such an environment, who would listen to the radio? Not only the Beijing radio station, even many radio stations all over the country were cancelling their children's story segments. The market was as such. No one could reverse the situation. Hence, John Yi's words were treated as a joke. Many people did not even bother retorting. There was no meaning behind having an exchange and clarification. Little Zhong. Teacher Fong also said, you really think so? Zhong Yi said in a determined fashion, I didn't have this thought yesterday, but I have it now. This rascal was a warrior. He was still resigning himself to despair before, but now, after seeing Deputy Station Head Jiu and his family challenging him, his fighting spirit was rekindled. He was full of energy. You don't understand the situation. Teacher Fong wanted to explain it to him. However, Zhong Yi refused to listen, you don't have to speak any further. I do not need to understand the situation either. You don't have to care what I do. You just focus on your retirement procedures. Hand everything over to me. I, Zhong Yi, will guarantee you that Old and Young Story Club will soar to even greater heights. I will not let your baby end in my hands. If you believe me, then don't leave the unit first. Aren't there still five days left? Five days is sufficient. See how I make our program do well. Soaring youth? I'll let that Jiu Yang never be able to have his segment. Upon hearing that, Teacher Fong also felt a little excited, you really can do it. But the segment stories are all those fairy tales from the past. No matter how good your broadcasting skills are, everyone only cares about the story. Zhong Yi flatly said, then I'll write my own stories. You do not have children. You won't understand the mentality of children. Teacher Fong cautioned him, this is different from writing a novel or composing a poem. Zhong Yi was confident, wait and see. I'll make them not be able to speak a single word. All right, then go ahead and try. It's not early anymore. Let's go to the recording studio. On the way, I'll tell you things you need to pay attention to. Teacher Fong brought Zhong Yi along with him. However, just as they took a few steps, Li Sai came forward, Teacher Fong, Teacher Jiu just went to recording studio number three to record his new segment. You will need to wait. Teacher Fong's voice changed, which Teacher Jiu? It's Teacher Jiu, Jiu Yang. Li Sai no longer spoke to Teacher Fong as respectfully as in the past. There was no need to for a person that was about to leave. As for Zhong Yi, there was even less need to do so, as he had been blacklisted by the leader. I actually told him that your segment had already reserved it, but teacher Jiao got an expedited approval from the leader, so I had to give it to him. Well, recording studio number 4 will be free in an hour. Teacher Fong said angrily, it will nearly be 12 noon soon. How can we record an hour later? At that moment, it will be a live broadcast. Please don't get angry at me. 
This was not decided by me. Li Sai said. Zhong Yi had already seen through him, as he appeared unfazed, Teacher Feng, don't worry. Let's do a live broadcast today. I happen to like live broadcasts. Teacher Feng was unwilling, this is the first time you are going on the segment. You have also never narrated such a story. If there's a mistake, you. There won't be. I won't make a mistake. Zhong Yi said to Li Sai, reserve the live broadcast room for us. Li Sai extremely disliked Zhong Yi's tone. But after the spooky event that happened yesterday, he did not dare to challenge Zhong Yi. He did not even dare to enter a two meters radius from him, so he could only obediently follow the instructions. As the saying goes, kind people will be bullied. After being aware of Zhong Yi's powers and sinister side, everyone became well behaved. And Li Sai was one of them. He did not wish to be hit in the forehead another time. His wound was still hurting right now. Before noon. Live broadcast studio number 6. Today, other than Zhong Yi and teacher Feng, there was no one else. Everyone knew that Zhong Yi was doomed. This segment was also doomed. So naturally, no one had the mind to listen to their live broadcast. It was still before the segment's scheduled time. Zhong Yi took this opportunity to open his game ring. After the war of words, his reputation points had constantly increased. With the reputation gained from yesterday's ghost blows out the light, Zhong Yi already had another 100,000 reputation points today. Without any hesitation, he bought a memory search capsule. He searched through the fairy tales he had read when he was still young, reinforcing the memory. One story. Three stories. Five stories. The capsule's time was over. Zhong Yi had a great harvest before he opened his eyes. His eyes were clear and sparkling. We are about to begin. Teacher Phone cautioned him. He began the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. He turned on the volume and said amiably, Hello, children. It's our old and young story club segment today again. I am your old friend, Grandpa Phone. Today, I will introduce a new friend to everyone. His name is Uncle Zhong Yi. The following story and segment will be told by Uncle Zhong. Zhong Yi introduced himself, Hello, children. I am Zhong Yi. You can call me brother, and you can also call me uncle. He he. After handing over the segment, Teacher Phone turned off his volume and signaled to Zhong Yi. As he walked out, he looked backwards. He did not remain in the live broadcasting studio. It was not that Teacher Phone was assured of Zhong Yi, in contrast, he was overly worried. As such, he did not even dare watch or listen, for his heart could not take it. With Zhong Yi left alone, Zhong Yi felt even more calm. Old and Young Story Club had a bottleneck. It had its limitations. Those were all excuses. Zhong Yi did not believe in such crap. He still wanted to revive this segment. What was his method? It was to use the fairy tales from his world. His brain was filled with all sort of literature resources. Let's not even talk about one story a day, he could even narrate ten stories a day for a full month without a hitch. Furthermore, every story would be something never heard of in this world. Zhong Yi had even specially checked on the internet. Just like Ghost Blows Out the Light, this world did not have the famous fairy tale authors like Hans Christian Andersen or the Brothers Grimm. Lacking in children's literature? Others were worried, but he wasn't. His whole being was a resource. Zhong Yi began to speak the moment he opened his mouth. The memory search capsule had allowed him to reproduce the fairy tales without missing a word. The speed at which he narrated was different from that of narrating, Ghost Blows Out the Light. This was narrated to children, so the speed had to be done slowly. Furthermore, he could not use the tone of narrating a horror story. He had to use a soft and gentle tone. He even needed to pinch his throat to change his pitch, so as to let children feel closer to him. These basics had been completely learned by Zhong Yi when he was in college. Zhong Yi was not weaker than anyone else in these professional classes. He was only lacking a stage from which he could perform. Hence, for a person like him who had poor looks, he greatly valued work in the radio station. He needed to do well. He needed to reverse the situation with Old and Young Story Club. 
It was both for himself and also for Teacher Foam who had been kind to him. Today, I'll tell you a children's fairy tale. Once upon a time, long, long ago, a king and queen ruled over a distant land. Both of them wished for a child. So they sincerely prayed to God, God. We are a good king and queen. Please give us a child. Soon after that, the kind queen gave birth to a baby girl, who had skin white as snow, cheeks as red as apples. The people of this world did not understand. However, if anyone from Zhong Yi's world heard this, they would definitely blurt it out. Yes, Zhong Yi was narrating the famous, and widely known all around the world, fairy tale that everyone had heard before, news broadcast. All right, let's not joke. Chapter 39, Today It's The Emperor's New Clothes. Thursday morning. The previous day's ratings were out. The person who read out the ratings was not director Zhao Guoju, but newcomer Jiao Yang. Clearly, director Zhao was intending to groom him. Jiao Yang held the form as he said to everyone, the leader has given me this task. Actually, I'm quite nervous, as I keep thinking that announcing the ratings is a task that can offend people. He he. Tian Bin and Wu Ditao kindly smiled with him to match up with him. What was so funny? Zhang Yi scoffed. He was thinking, aren't your laughing points too low? Anything makes you laugh? First place, talk about the world. Second place, entertainment daily. Third place, late night ghost stories. The top ranking still remained the same. It was already fixed. Zhang Yi only cared about the ratings for Old and Young Story Club. This was because it was his only segment now. Not only him, there was also Teacher Fong who had hosted Old and Young Story Club for many years. He did not believe a bit of Zhong Yi's bold claims. He did not believe a wish that he could not fulfill for all these years could be fulfilled by him. However, the passion Zhong Yi had had infected Teacher Fong. He was also looking forward to it. 10th place. 20th place. When Zhou Yang read to the end, Zhong Yi's segment had finally appeared. It was unknown if it was intentional and his lips curled, last place, old and young story club, rating of 0.28%. Lining the bottom once again. It was the first from the back once again. This was not only just last in the literature channel, it was definitely within the bottom three in the entire Beijing radio station. Teacher Feng sighed. He also knew that this would be the outcome. Zhong Yi nearly cursed vulgarities. What the f asterisk asterisk k? How can it be so bad? This was Snow White. It was his world's greatest fairy tale. Can it not be so ridiculous? And the rating was that pathetic, at zero point something percent? It had no change from before? That should not have happened. The story of Ghost Blows Out the Light, and the few poems he threw out had already proven that the culture of the two worlds were interchangeable. How could it not work? Tian Bin slanted his eyes at Zhong Yi. Li Sai and Wu Ditao also looked at Zhong Yi's expression. After that, they and the rest did not say a word. They did not even mock, as this was something that they had taken for granted. No one had put the bold words that Zhong Yi had said yesterday to heart. The fairy tales these days had already been regurgitated so much that they were all bland. There were only those few stories. Ignoring the children, even as adults, they could narrate it backwards. You wanted to stir up old and young story club in such an environment? They only laughed. After the results were announced, everyone began working. Zhong Yi had reserved recording studio number 4 at 10. He was about to go. Teacher phone called out to him from behind. After hesitating for a while, he said, Forget it, little Zhong. This might be your last program. Just do your best and do not have any regrets. Zhong Yi did not respond, as he silently entered the recording studio. Forget it? Impossible. His dictionary did not have the two words, forget it. Even if the whole world did not acknowledge him, even if everyone thought that he couldn't make it, Zhong Yi would use his beliefs and principles and use his greatest abilities to do things to his best. He began recording. Zhong Yi was very professional. Although he was emotional, the moment he switched on his headset, he changed to the attitude that he should have. He warmly smiled. Hello, children. 
Welcome to today's Old and Young Story Club. I'm wondering if everyone found yesterday's story, Snow White, interesting. Or maybe if it has made you think about what sort of person you would want to be like when you grow up. Today, I'll bring out another story for everyone. Old and Young Story Club was similar to the late night ghost stories of the past. It did not have any advertisement sponsorship. Its listenership ratings were too low, hence he did not need to record advertisements like he did for the final tens of episodes of Ghost Blows Out the Light at the beginning. He could immediately narrate his story. Many years ago, there was an emperor. He spent all his money that so he could dress nicely. He did not care about his army, nor did he like to go to the theater. He also did not like to tour the parks in his coach, unless it was to show off his brand new clothes. Every day, at one o'clock, he would change into a new set of clothes. When people mentioned him, they would always say, the emperor is in the changing room. Someone must have guessed it. Yes, this is the famous story from John Yee's world. It was the famous fairy tale that had even appeared in many textbooks, news broadcast. All right, let's not make this joke in the future. Definitely not again. Yes, the fairy tale's name is News. It's called The Emperor's New Clothes. He's actually not wearing any clothes, all the citizens finally said. The Emperor felt a slight quiver. This was because he felt that what the citizens said appeared to be true. However, he was still thinking, I need to finish this parade. As such, he put on a proud air. His officials followed behind him, holding onto a gown that did not exist. The story finished. Coming out of the recording studio into the bathroom. Teacher phone was still smoking worriedly in the bathroom, you are done recording. It's done. John Yi went to relieve himself. However, the moment he approached, the surrounding colleagues from the literature channel dispersed. Tian Bin was still by the urinal. He had dodged far away before he had even zipped up his pants. Only then did he pull up his zipper and take a long path around Zhong Yi, before exiting the bathroom. The others did the same. The bathroom was empty almost immediately. Teacher Feng smiled. Look at your popularity. Zhong Yi felt innocent, am I that scary? What say you? Were the events in the office not spooky enough? I know it was a coincidence, but it was too great a coincidence. It happened once, thrice and five times. How can people not speak about it after seeing it? He he, it is only that both of us have good relations, or else anyone who wants to offend you will have to think twice before doing anything. After joking, teacher Fong said after noticing that the surroundings were empty, I know that you have done your best. Don't worry about the segment. I was already mentally prepared. I also know that this segment won't last any longer. Jiao Yang is the station leader's relative. If he wants to go on a program, no one can stop him. Zhong Yi's attitude was very clear, teacher Feng, I feel that nothing is impossible. This reason or that explanation are all excuses. I don't believe I can't fix them. I don't believe our segment's ratings will not be able to be pulled up in this life. Late night ghost stories was pulled up by me. Previously, what did people say of that segment? They said it was impossible. Its performance was even worse than Old and Young Story Club. But now, what has happened? I had managed to bring it up with my efforts. I could pull the segment with the worst ratings to the top three. Now, I can also pull Old and Young Story Club into the top three. Chapter 40, Fairytale Essay Competition Before getting off work Zhao Guoju called Zhong Yi into his office, little Zhong, now that it's just the two of us, I want to have a nice chat with you. He said earnestly, you were brought in by me. The facts have proven that I was not wrong. Your ability has been acknowledged by everyone. You have also gained the recognition of the listeners. However, humans are not lone individuals in this society. You need to eat, you need to survive, you need to cater to others, you need to be tactful. The station had planned the case regarding, Ghost Blows Out the Light, for a very long time. It had even established a special small planning team for it. Just because of one simple word from you of not selling, all the plans the station's management had gone up into smoke. How could the station not be angry about this? Me suppressing you a bit this time was beyond my control. Do you understand what I mean? I understand. 
Zhong Yi said with a deadpan expression. That's good, then about the copyright. Zhao Guoju persuaded. Zhong Yi said without hesitation, not selling. Zhao Guoju turned mad again, you really can't give me peace of mind. Zhong Yi also said his heartfelt feelings, Director Zhao, I know you greatly appreciated me. Back then it was you who took me in despite my looks. For this favor, I'll remember you for life. I know the station is repressing me, so it's fine no matter how you treat me. However, about the copyright, I will say that same line forever, e not selling. You are willing to not go on a segment in the future? Zhao Guoju asked as he worried over his talent. Zhong Yi said, I still have a segment now. I will pull it up. Zhao Guoju knocked on the form on his table, the afternoon listenership rates have been handed out. Although it will only be announced tomorrow, I shall take this opportunity to tell you that Old and Young Story Club is still in last place. This segment cannot be pulled up. It's useless, no matter who it is. Your talent should be placed on a bigger stage, but why are you so stubborn? You, hi, forget it. Go back. Lining the bottom once again? Really can't be pulled up? Zhong Yi refused to believe that it was so. If two episodes weren't enough, he would record a third. If the third recording wasn't enough, he would record a fourth. He still had three days' time. It was still possible for him to turn the situation around. The sky still was bright, even after he returned home. The rental apartment was quiet and lonely. It was like his current situation. Zhong Yi switched on the computer as he absent-mindedly read the news. After some analysis, he realized that the reason why the ratings had not been pulled up was not the fault of the story. How could Snow White and The Emperor's New Clothes have a problem? They were the classic fairy tales out of the classics fairy tales from his world. The reason was apparently due to inertia. There were not that many people listening to this segment. New listeners were already completely disappointed with the present fairy tales, or they were sick of them. There was no habit to even listen in. There would not be any fresh blood being injected, so it would be odd if the listenership rate was going up. How was he to attract new listeners? He felt that he needed an opportunity, otherwise, it would be very difficult. Zhong Yi left his mouse as he switched on television, planning to watch the news channel. As someone working in the media industry, watching the news was part and parcel of one's daily work. Today, another heinous case of a missing child happened in the capital. In a small district near to Cheng Nan Jiu Yuan, four-year-old Wen Wen was left alone at home with his parents at work. According to police investigations and analysis of closed-circuit TV footage, Wen Wen had opened the door to a male stranger around the age of 35. It is unknown what method this person used to gain Wen Wen's trust. Not only did he bring away Wen Wen, he had taken several valuables in the house. According to the closed-circuit TV footage, Wen Wen apparently was not crying. Currently, the police are using all their efforts to take in criminal suspects. This is the picture of the suspect taken from the closed-circuit TV. If anyone sees this suspect, please immediately contact the number shown on your screen. The Central TV's news channel's female anchorwoman said solemnly with a tinge of anger. Next were street and school interviews. A woman holding a vegetable basket said to the reporter, This is already the fourth time a child has been abducted from home this month, right? It's so depraved. These people should be shot to death. An old man said, Why do these sort of things keep happening? Why would a child open the door to a stranger? I think it's a problem with our education. At a particular kindergarten, the reporter interviewed at a promotional event held in the school. There were many people gathered in the school field. There were teachers, older students and parents. Little friends, remember that when you are alone at home, you must never open the door to strangers. Did you hear that? Heard that. Can you remember? Yes. The screen switched back to the studio. The female anchor said, actually. The instructions of never to open the door to a stranger has been repeated countless numbers of times in the children education system. All the children know this, but when they meet strangers who claim to be mommy's or daddy's colleague, they still open the door. This is the fourth time that it has happened this month. I do not know what has gone wrong in our education system. 
maybe we should use a teaching method more suitable for children to tell them this. It should not be something repeated to them in a dogmatic manner. Children have their children's way of thinking and their own world. The way we indoctrinate them with ideas might not be something they can understand. Hence, a week ago, Beijing's education ministry has led the way by organizing the historically largest fairy tale essay competition event. The name is Fairy Tale Essays Collection for Not Opening the Door to Strangers. The goal is to use these fairy tales to caution children in a fun and educative manner, so as to let children genuinely realize how to protect themselves. Fairy Tale Essays Collection? John Yi immediately had a feeling. Here came an opportunity. But the next thing the female anchor said made him disappointed, submissions began last week and the deadline is at midnight, tonight. During this period, the education ministry has allowed people to vote as a fair way to choose the number one story. From that, kindergarten and elementary schools or other child care groups will receive large-scale promotions. It was already 7 plus p.m. There was less than five hours left. Zhong Yi switched off the television and hurriedly opened the Beijing's education ministry's specially created essay website. There were many publicity pictures on it. They were filled with pictures of children that had gone missing in Beijing. Their smiling faces, their pictures of their lives and the crying expressions of the parents whose children had gone missing. There was only one slogan, please use your words to help children. Upon seeing this, Zhong Yi's heart felt heavy, as if he felt suffocated. He was planning to look for an opportunity to improve the segment's ratings. But upon seeing that the deadline was at midnight, Zhong Yi knew that it was impossible. Others had accumulated a full week of votes, so how could he exceed them within just a few hours? However, when he followed the stories of how children were abducted, Zhong Yi felt that he had to write something. It had nothing to do with his segment, nor did it have to do with anything else. He just wanted to contribute a portion of his strength. So what if he did not succeed? It was enough, as long as he did something. As this matter caused quite a commotion in society, people on the streets, in public transport, on the internet and those interacting with online media were all reflecting and discussing about it. It could be considered a hot topic among all the citizens. Anything that was child-related would forever be something that grabbed the hearts of people. Hence, this continuous outbreak of heinous crimes had caused great concern for society. As such, this fairy tale essay competition had become abnormally well received. Many people published their stories. The most famous one was by Dao Shueru, the highest paid female children's fairy tale author in the country. Secondly, there was Little Red Mushroom. It was a stage name. She, too, was a female children's fairy tale author. The sales of her books were inferior to Dao Shueru, but the most famous fairy tale in the country was hers. The both of them were practically propping up about half of the children's fairy tale industry in the country. There were other children's literature authors. Many authors of fairy tales that people were familiar with when they were young had submitted their stories to the essay competition. The ranking was as follows. Little Red Mushroom, 28,018 votes. Dao Shueru, 24,311 votes. Old Lee, 17,223 votes. Zhong Cheong, 16,976 votes. For the story competition, the authors who submitted their works would show their verified status. For example, Little Red Mushroom and Company all had their verified status. Zhong Cheong, who was ranked at fourth place, was a children's literature author. Only Old Li, who was in third place, was not in the industry. In his verification status, there was written, Office Employee. Zhong Yi flipped through the stories. Ever since the world changed into a different world, Zhong Yi always had a feeling of looking down upon others. However, when he looked at the top ranking stories, he was quite impressed. They were worthy of being the top figures in the field of children's literature. They were well written, especially Little Red Mushroom's children's story that was ranked first. Even if it was brought to Zhong Yi's world, it was a high-quality fairy tale that could be remade into an animation. However, it was still lacking slightly. It was not that the story was poor, but it was because the story was slightly complex. After all, the target audience of a fairy tale to warn children not to open a door to a stranger was definitely very young. One could not expect them to understand things that were too complicated. 
Little Red Mushroom story was 8,000,000 words long. So although it was really good, there were too many characters. John Yi suspected that children would not be able to finish reading it properly. The further he went down the ranks, the more horrible the stories became. Ignoring those who were not professional authors, some of those with verification statuses were children's literature authors. How could they write such a mess? These stories all had a serious problem. Either they were so childish that even children themselves would find it childish, or they were too mature, where the entire story was written according to an adult's way of thinking. How could these be shown to children? None of them could work. All of the stories were inappropriate. Zhong Yi pulled up his sleeves and got to work. He felt that he had a story that was extremely appropriate. It was also a story gathered out of the overall essence from his world. It would be perfect if used in this essay competition. There was no other story that was better than that one. Zhong Yi first used his Weibo's information to gain the recognition on the education website. After obtaining his verification, Zhong Yi began typing. He clacked away before uploading it. The story's name, Little Bunnies Be Good. Mommy Bunny had three children. One was called Little Red Eyes, one was called Long Ears, and one was called Stumpy Tail. One day, Mommy Bunny said to her children, Mommy is going to the fields to pick carrots. Watch the house and close the door. Don't open the door to anyone, open the door only when Mommy comes. Mommy Bunny carried her basket and walked towards the fields. The little bunnies remembered Mommy's words and locked the door well. Later on, the big bad wolf came. He wanted to enter the little bunny's house, but the door was tightly closed by the little bunnies, so he could not enter. The big bad wolf sat by the little bunny's door. He narrowed his eyes and thought of a bad idea. Suddenly, he saw Mommy Bunny return. He quickly ran and hid behind a large tree. Mommy Bunny came to the door. She pushed the door but the door was tightly closed. As she knocked, she sang, Little bunnies be good, open the door. Come, open it quickly, I want to come in.